and this story begins with Hurasawa Kazuki, an ordinary Japanese student, the kind you can meet anywhere. And this man, without any distinctive qualities, suddenly received a terrifying notification about what awaited him eight years later, about his death. No, I still couldn't understand how everything could turn out like this. Standing near the mirror, our hero was surprised. The next moment, the maid was called in for questioning, and the girl apologized, saying that she was very sorry, but she was asked to stop lying. At this moment, the mother was holding her son, looking at this whole situation with him. Our hero at that moment thought that it was a gaming event. Game on consoles brave at heart. A stereotypical fantasy RPG in which the main character named Rianer has to save the world. And although the graphics and the battle scenes were done in 2D, the heroes performed so many actions due to their specialty magic and skills that his system was completely absorbed and no one paid attention to the quality of the picture. Despite the generally linear plot, Hidden dungeons and additional events, romance and fascinating character dialogues are just a few of the captivating features of this game. Our hero has already forgotten how many times he completed it and is completely addicted to it. The young man played this game so many times that he actually memorized all the lines of dialogue in all game events. And now the head of the Stokes family is Lord Hayden, his wife Lady Jessica and maid Clara. Why did the characters in the game suddenly begin to move, as if everything that was happening in reality? And where was he that he slept through such a radical update? It seemed to the young man that it was simply terrible to start the game from such a depressing moment. This was supposed to be one of the flashbacks. According to the script, Clara, the mother of the main character was once executed by Harold, the Stokes heir. But our hero tried to understand where he himself was then. He is sure that in this scene he is being hugged by his worried mother. And she also explained to Harold that everything was in order and there was no need to worry about anything. At this moment, terrible actions were happening next to them. The man, raising his sword over the girl, shouted that it was pointless to beg for his worthless life. After all, he will personally cleanse the world of such vile filth as her. At that moment the girl was thinking about Colette, and our hero, stopping the actions, asked his father to stop too. The young man asked to be allowed to execute her. Our hero, of course, did not understand what was happening. His body moved on its own. Having heard that our hero wanted to do this, the father did not understand what he planned to do. His son was quick to explain that he had recently received a new magic and would use it as his training dummy, since it had to be a better use for it than getting blood all over this floor. The father thought this was interesting and they needed to throw this woman into the dungeon and they needed to be stricter with her, and also not take their eyes off her, the father ordered. The girl was a vile half-breed, he said, but despite the fact that they showed sympathy for her by allowing her to work for them, she could not really complete a single assignment. Well, what else could you expect from such a lowly creature? She would serve as an excellent target for Harold's magical experiments. Our hero, standing in front of his parents listening to all this, tried to understand what was happening to him. Looking in the mirror, the young man realized that here he was much younger than in the original story. But still there was no doubt, our hero was Harold Stokes, disgusting and arrogant, the most despised character of the Bravehearts. The young man was doomed to death at the hands of Justice, the last boss. Our hero was trying to understand why he turned into this, whether he had gone crazy or maybe he was just having a realistic dream. All these questions occupied the young man while he stood in front of the mirror. After all, he was an ordinary Japanese student and this happened to him. At that moment he began to shake, but then he was interrupted by a knock on the door. Harold understood that he answered without even thinking about being entered. But knowing himself, Harold would never say come in, so his voice expressed it on its own. A man stood on the threshold in front of him and the young man realized that it was Norman. Among all the characters, the man is so reasonable that he received the nickname The Conscience of the Stokes. In the event with the participation of the Stokes family, he alone had the rank of a saint, instead of off-scale hatred points. But he was just a butler and there was no Stokes blood in him. Sitting down on the bed, our hero asked what business the butler had with him and he explained that he would like to consult with him about the issue. Staring at the young man, he thought that our hero was not feeling well and thought that then he could come back later. The young man thought to himself that everything was in order and that they should not pay attention to him. But the true face of our hero of the city said that everything was fine. The butler, without stopping, carefully watched the young man's face because it bothered him very much. Our hero was very irritable and thought that everything was in order, telling his butler about it. 
He spoke to him so rudely that our hero thought to himself about what a damn language he had, because it absolutely did not allow him to dispel Norman's suspicions, and everything the young man wanted to say was adapted to Harold's speech styles. The butler thought that Mr. Harold usually expresses his dissatisfaction without hesitation, but he still acted a little strange today. The butler decided to cast aside these doubts and wanted to tell him why he came here. Norman explained that he had pleaded for a lesser sentence for Clara. Our hero understood, because right now the life or death of this woman is in Harold's hands. Remembering the recent scene, he understood that his mouth then simply read the text of the script, but he did not have the slightest desire to follow it, because he had completely forgotten about it, being in shock that he had turned into Harold and had to do everything to save this girl. And then our city wondered if this was really normal, because Clara's daughter Colette is the main character in this story. After Clara is burned by Harold's magic, and the orphan Colette is thrown out of the Stokes estate. Desperate and exhausted, she will be accepted into the family of the main character Rhaenyra. And if he saves Clara now, the heroes will never meet, and it will be a completely different story. However, our hero thought that if we follow the principle of inevitability, the heroes will still find each other, no matter what. But even in this case, his personal future would be shrouded in darkness, so it was easier to assume that this principle did not exist and lead Harold through all the game events, but just without causing much hatred from others. Our hero knew that this was an RPG world and death lurks around every corner. If he had deviated too much from the plot with his good deeds, he would not have been able to read the future, and would die from an accidental sneeze, which was not in the original story. But without changing the script on a large scale, but only carefully directing it in the right direction, perhaps he will not only achieve the salvation of the world. Our hero wanted to ask the butler whether he meant that maid Clara, but what came out of his hearing was that it was really that same maid Clara. And in fact, he wanted to save her, but he could not act openly, the young man thought to himself. What came out of his mouth was that he was cursing everything in the world and offering to save this woman. Our hero tried to somehow control his language, but it didn't work. His hate points will increase no matter what he tries to do. The next moment, turning away from the butler, our hero explained that if he wanted to save someone, he had to go first and think. He will listen to everything he has to say to him later. The butler was surprised when he heard this. The next moment he wanted to say something to our hero, but the young man was very angry with himself and ordered Norman to get out. He bowed and thanked the young man. The next moment he left, and our hero was left alone. Exhaling heavily, he sank onto the bed, thinking that he had been too naive. With this voice lodged inside, he will still seem like a complete scoundrel in the eyes of others. Sighing, the young man thought that maybe he shouldn't have tried then. Perhaps, after death, he could return to his home world. But all these thoughts were wrong, as it seemed to the young man, and could also mean that he would die in the real world, and it was too risky to try that. He got up from his bed and began looking for various things. In his hands were an empty jar of life potion and a red marble. They looked exactly the same as in the game and the books that were in front of him were written in Japanese. It was very convenient and, however, everything in the game was also in Japanese, as the young man remembered. Still, the best thing that our hero can do is follow the script. He will not yet understand how to get out of this whole situation. But if possible, avoid committing the bad deeds that Harold did. But is this the same world that was described in Brave at Heart? The young man wondered. Perhaps it was just some other world, but very similar. The young man decided that before doing anything, he needed to check his knowledge of the original story. After reading the book, he thought that he would not receive any other information. Then he needed to get himself a good trump card so that death would finally leave him behind. The young man thought as he got dressed. Heading out of his house, our hero thought that there was a dungeon in front of them. He was wondering how many people were inside there and the knight who accompanied him to this building explained that there should only be one there for now. It seemed to our hero that this was the best for him. Leaving the guard outside, the young man went inside. Then he saw another guard who was lying down, and when he saw Mr. Harold he jumped up from his place. The young man explained that he was going to interrogate the prisoner, and the knight that was right in front of him should not even think of going there. All he could do was obey our hero. Going down into the dungeon, the young man saw Clara. The girl looked at the young man in a daze, and our hero called the girl six as Clara and Merle. Seeing Mr. Harold, she looked at the young man with shaking hands. Our hero knew that perhaps the time had come. He could arrange it if she wanted so badly, however, he is here for another reason. The girl had to answer questions extremely truthfully and without concealment. Our hero asked if she had a family and the girl said that she had only one daughter. The next moment the young man was wondering what her name was and the girl's name was Colette. 
Then our hero decided to inquire about the other relatives and how it happened that she was left alone with her daughter. Clara said that she ran away with her husband so she could no longer communicate with her family. And three years ago her husband died from illness. Having interrogated the maid, our hero now everything became clear why Colette had no other relatives except her mother. Then he decided to ask how old the girl was and Clara said that her daughter was nine years old. She was just a simple girl with no experience in magic or martial arts. After the survey, our hero thought that the result was rather positive. The information corresponded to what he learned from the original story, but some details were even added. Harold found out everything he wanted. There was nothing more for him to do here. Then, when he left, he said goodbye to Clara, because they were supposed to see each other again. But at that moment Clara asked him to wait and stop. The girl said in a pleading voice that if she died, then her daughter Clara would be left completely alone, and what would happen to her. At this age it will be so difficult for her, she may not survive. Therefore, as soon as she is gone, Clara asked to take care of her. The girl was just a child. Colette didn't do anything wrong. The girl asked with a pleading look and tears. Our hero only said that it was all disgusting. This was her humiliation and these tears, and this was stupidity and vain fear. The girl did not understand what he wanted to say by this, but at that moment our hero left the dungeon. Returning to his home, he thought that in his heart he was simply crying out of sympathy, but despite this, the best words of comfort that he could find for her with his terrible voice. Here, in the corridor in front of his room, Harold met Norman, who was carrying papers. The young man asked what the butler wanted from him. Norman showed him a map of Stokes's possessions, which showed towns and villages in and around the territory. It was a useful thing. Norman wondered how the young man would save the maid. Norman suggested to him that the best way out would be for the girl to leave the Stokes property. Our hero understood that, as a future feudal lord, he had to worry about how his tax-paying population would run away, catch them along the roads and hang them. But one particular maid could be neglected. There were not so many of these taxes from her, and she could have failed in all four directions. Our hero said that he no longer wanted to see her. The young man, looking at the map, asked the butler where they were going to evict her, and the butler suggested the village of Blush. It was a coincidence, exactly where Reiner lives with his family, and there is no doubt that after that the heroes will definitely meet. But they will live in different families, and the young man wondered whether they would become as close as in the original story. Therefore, our hero asked whether it was generally possible to freely cross borders in feudal domains. Norman explained to him that there were no special rules unless, of course, our hero was a merchant or a nobleman, but it would be difficult for a girl to live if she was sent without anything to a foreign country. You need at least some minimum for the first time. Our hero realized that there would be expenses to take into account her daughter, and also a cart. If you take them with the coat of arms, you will need to get permission. The more Harold thought about it, the less he liked it. The butler was very surprised about the girl's daughter, because he always thought that the guy would be the same as his parents. The butler thought that it was possible that a young man at such a young age was already worried about the fate of other people. Norman thought that, probably, it was for this reason that our hero said all those words to him and maybe his boast that he was going to burn the maid was just an attempt to hide her away from the eyes of his parents. It seemed to him that now he did not object to her relocation, probably because he wanted to save her, as Norman thought. Norman realized that Mr. Harold had done everything to save her from the very beginning. This means he also couldn't lose face. Lord Hayden and Lady Jessica are representatives of the nobility who adhere to the principle of blood purity. They look down on all nobles whose pedigree they doubt, and do not consider ordinary people to be people at all. Norman thought that since there was such a thing, they needed to be sent to a neighboring city. It would be easier to find income there, especially during the Harvest Festival. But our hero said that the cost of living was even higher than in the Stokes domain. The holiday will end, and then half-starved everyday life will begin. Norman realized that the young man was so worried about the fate of a simple servant. If everything was so, then this boy can become a real ray of hope for all residents of the Stokes domain. The next day, the young man began to use his magic and a pillar of fire appeared. Looking at this in surprise, the young man realized that he had succeeded. Then it seemed to him that it was just hack work, not magic. It was much worse than in the game. But our hero was excited that he could actually use magic, that he even managed to use everything the first time. The young man felt some excitement, but then he thought that there was nothing to be happy about and tried again. Not only did he have to let Clara escape, but he also had to make a fairy tale come true where he burned her to the ground. If he doesn't set fire enough, no one will believe him. 
Looking at the scorched earth, the young man wondered if what he had done was enough. After all, since he could not present the corpse of the maid, everyone should think that not even ashes remained of Clara. Our hero reflected that she was no longer a collection of pixels on a screen, and everything was to be decided tonight. Failure was not an option or death would eventually catch up with the young man. The start of the mission, our hero, together with the maid, stood next to Norman. Then suddenly they saw Colette running to her mother. Seeing her daughter, the mother rushed into her arms and both cried. Our hero watched this from the side. He asked them to stop crying and listen carefully, because he gave them two options to choose from. The first was his beloved, die without leaving this place, and the second, run away from here as quickly as possible and never return. If they choose the latter, they will die here, leaving Stock's domain forever and breaking all their ties and relationships. Hearing this, the girls tried to understand whether our hero would really allow this. The young man asked to choose quickly, before he lost patience, because there was so much fuss with them, such insects. Our hero said that he was already waiting, couldn't wait to finish them off, and that was the end of it. At that moment they asked for forgiveness, but wanted to live for the sake of their daughter, Clara explained. Our hero thought to himself that everything was fine and what would he do if she talked about how he should have killed her. But all that came out of his mouth was that it was boring. As she approached, the girl came closer to the young man, and our hero announced that he would give it to her. Putting the locket on Colette, telling her that she was always supposed to wear it and never take it off. This is his condition for allowing them to escape. The girl had to understand him, and Colette accepted that. The girl, he said, was supposed to give it to someone who really needed it, but this person had to be about her age and skilled in everything. In return, she will make him promise to become her knight, to protect himself everywhere. The girl at that moment only looked at him in surprise. Approaching her, the mother reported that Mr. Harold told her to give him to someone who would protect her. Now everything became clear to the girl, and our hero asked them to get out of here. And the next moment he called the guard. Harold told them to take these two and put them in a wagon on the road. Then they had to act as he said. The young man, looking at them with his evil gaze, once again wanted to repeat to them that they had to carefully watch so that strangers would not notice them. If they fail the operation, life will cost no more than a doctor. He was extremely serious, so they had to take care of them. But the words coming out of his mouth were completely different. Hearing our hero, both knights shuddered and were afraid to carry out his order. Otherwise it would be bad for them. He still needed to do something. Leaving our hero alone, the young man thought that this was great gratitude. Even if they did, they thanked him for saving their lives, because he realized that Harold was the cause of their troubles. But if he crashed into a maid while she was watering flowers, and then fell face down in the mud, the damage to his honor was unbearable, and because of this he killed her. It is not surprising that he was hated for the rest of his life. Our hero thought that now these two could live a quiet life for many years to come. Now there was only one thing left. At that moment, Norman, walking through the forest, thought that for some reason Mr. Harold was very upset. Was it worth leaving him alone right now? The old man wondered. But he thought that the young man would quickly return to his usual disposition. Knowing this, he probably shouldn't have interfered. At that moment he heard terrible laughter and our hero screaming about how disgusting she was to him. The values of her life in the name of humanity. He will turn her into a pathetic pile of ashes. This will be her end. Then a pillar of fire appeared. Seeing this, this butler was shocked by what Mr. Harold did. The young man understood that he was again mindlessly pronouncing this memorized text, as if he was adopting the behavior of his character. The young man thought of sending Norman away just in case. Because of the contemptuous laughter and loud conversation with the absent Clara, if only someone had listened to him. In their eyes, the young man would look like a complete madman. While our hero was walking and thinking about all this, on the way he met Norman, who was waiting for him in the forest. Our hero didn't understand why the man was still there, trying to figure out if he heard what he screamed earlier. Therefore, all he could do was ask Norman what he forgot here, because he was clearly sending him away. Norman apologized to our hero. The young man asked him to forget about it, and forget about everything that he saw today or take it with him to the grave, without telling anyone for the rest of his life. Harold would not accept any other answer from him than agreement. Norman agreed. The next moment our hero turned around and walked away. At this moment, Norman was thinking about why our hero was trying so hard to hide his weakness. Has he always fought this battle alone, taking his parents as bad role models and not having enough power at the moment, trying his best to avoid confrontation, knowing what consequences would follow due to the friction that had begun with his parent. He deliberately misled all the inhabitants of the estate. Norman couldn't even imagine how much our hero was in pain. After all, the young man can't even open up to anyone.
but why in all these 10 years he never thought of getting close to this boy and didn't even notice his feelings. Thinking about all this, Norman began to think that he couldn't just regret. He had no other choice but to atone for these 10 years of inaction as far as he has the strength, until the heart of this innocent boy stops tormenting under the yoke of the surrounding evil. Clara and her daughter set off in the carriage. At that moment, Clara recalled how the knights discussed among themselves that they would keep their mouths shut. They knew that Mr. Harold had been doing everything all day. Before that, on his instructions, they rushed around and prepared the horses, and all they did in the morning was snort. As soon as they were supposed to be in the village of Blush, leave Clara and Colette, and they themselves, along with the cart, go to the city, our heroes gave instructions. The young man also gave them permission to travel through other people's property. Harold knocked it out when he demanded the sword from the blacksmith from face, so they had to take the money and give it to Clara as compensation for moral damages. Hearing that they had to give all the money, Everyone was very surprised, because these were gold coins to buy a sword in Litza. Our hero thought that, probably, the soldiers in front of him were fools or were just pretending. After all, buy some cheap sword instead and that's all they needed. Mrs. Clara was looking at the bag of money at that moment. Then the knights asked if she was sleeping. The village of Blushy has already appeared. They would arrive just as the sun was rising, so they suggested taking a short nap. But the girl asked them not to worry. She wanted to bask a little in this dawn. The knights, of course, understood her feelings, because the dawn was wonderful. While in the mansion, the young man told his parents about what had happened. Having heard that the young man burned her so that there was not even a body left, the parents were incredibly happy, saying that Harold was simply magnificent. They were proud of him. His father knew his son was like that. The mother also hugged her son, because he had such great abilities in magic and was very happy about this too. The young man, listening to their praise in his direction, thought that it was not such a big deal. He thought to himself that they must have suspected him at least a little. After all, their son had just killed a woman and a child, and they were so diligent in praising him. This gap between them could not be bridged in a lifetime. However, he had no such intention. This was the main thing that they swallowed it all and they had to be happy that the rescue plan was successful. Apologizing for interrupting our hero, a young man came in and asked what Harold was up to again. Harold replied that this was something that did not concern Zen, so he asked him to close the door. Then he inquired a little about what the young man forgot here. Realizing that our hero had always been so cold, Zen explained that it was still after that night that they were brought together under the lunar moon though. The young man asked him not to say another word. He remembered perfectly well what he was doing and therefore had to forget about it if he did not want to feed the monster fish. Our hero thought to himself that he really wanted to take a break from this young man, and Zen, Watching our hero, thought that since Harold wasn't driving him away today, that was already good. Of course, he couldn't help but be happy, because who was Harold and who was he, but it seems he didn't care about different statuses. Zen was glad that the young man even spoke to him today, because he even remembered his name. Our hero at that moment was thinking about completely different things. Zen, looking at the thoughtful young man, just smiled. Having looked at what the young man wrote, he saw about the carrier, the soil. It seemed to Zen that the young man decided to do something in the garden, addressing him as if he were an aristocrat. Harold immediately offered to sew up his mouth, along with the pot, asking if Zen wanted to try it. But the young man explained that he would manage. But our hero showed him how these plants grew, and the next moment explained that he approved some of the potion that he had in his hands. He diluted some with water, and Zen saw the potion of life in the young man's hands. Of course, the young man had never heard of watering vegetables with any kind of alchemy, but they act on plants better than any fertilizers and, in fact, these are fertilizers, our hero explained. Only those where the potions don't mix with water at all dry up before they have time to bear fruit. So Harold was looking for the right ratio of water to make something like a good potion. Having cleaned the fruit, our hero offered it to Xena to eat. Hearing that the young man suggested that he eat it raw, Zen, of course, did not like it. The next moment, Zen opened his mouth and decided to try the fruit, reporting that it was very tasty, because they were much sweeter and incredibly tasty. Hearing how the young man reacted, our hero thought that the tasting was a success. It turned out a little differently from the game, but he didn't expect that the so-called ZZH method of farming would work here at all. Now Harold thought it was worth taking advantage of this. The Stokes property has been hit by several natural disasters in recent years, and many farmers have suffered from low yields and high taxes. If it weren't for Corman, he wouldn't even know about it. Harold suspected that the Stokes were squeezing the juice out of their subjects, but he had no clear picture of what was happening. Of course, our hero didn't care how this family would end up when the population rebelled. 
but it would be advisable to avoid reprisals against oneself personally. Our hero asked Zen to stop overeating, and he had to take it to the cooks, because they also had to taste it and compare it with regular food thinking about how it will be served and maybe something else. Zen agreed and obeyed the order, and our hero explained that if someone approached him and asked whose orders he was following, what would Zen answer? Then Zen thought that it was a secret and he would be dumb as the grave. Turning to Mr. Harold, the young man explained. The next moment he ran away, and our hero, closing the door behind him, thought that he was probably a fool, because where did the young man get so much enthusiasm? Going out and training with a sword, our hero thought that now he had to try training with his right hand. After practicing, the young man thought that he was pretty skilled at this. After all, he was now in Harold's body. He was wondering what his characteristics were. Of course, Harold was a very bad person, but one of the strongest fighting characters. Fighting against him was even more torture. Our hero thought that of course he had a long way to go, but there was still time to improve his magic and fencing. And depending on his efforts, the original story could become no less epic. Combat is important for survival in this world of sword and magic. He was already thinking that it was impossible for someone like Harold to avoid every fight in the game. There will be a line of people willing to line up, including the protagonist's group in full force. And our hero decided that he could deal with everyone. At this moment in another place, news reached the family's domain about the son of the Stokes family. Addressing Erica in front of them, they apologized. The girl asked not to apologize to her father, she knew that this was done to save their family. Protecting them was her specialty as a daughter of the Sumeragi family. The miasma continued to spread through the forest, already covering a third of the mountain. They kept getting new outbreaks of disease among the population, and if the corruption spreads further, they will eventually lose their forest production and will not be able to properly support the people in Sumeragi. It was sad for the father, but they had no other choice, except to sacrifice his daughter to support their economy. They apologized to Erica, but at that moment Erica went into the garden, wanting to be alone after what her parents told her. The maid caught up with her, and she explained to June the maid that everything was in order and asked to leave her alone. While in the garden, the girl thought that she was powerless, which is why worrying about herself would not give anything. In the end, it was the only thing she could do for the sake of her people. Reading the papers in front of our hero, the man just looked at them silently, and the young man explained that this was a copy of the statement of income and expenses that they had compiled, wondering if there was a serious error in the application. The man explained that they were not there, they were absent. Harold asked him not to worry, because he did not call him to cause him trouble or anything like that, as he might have thought. Indeed, in the last few years, the finances of the Stokes family have only gotten worse, and the biggest reason is the extravagance of his parents, who spend everything on clothes and jewelry. They wanted to compensate with inheritance and high taxes, but that wouldn't last long either. This only increases the burden on citizens to ask whether the man agreed with him. The man admitted that such a tendency exists, after thinking a little and answering our hero very carefully. In fact, people who had to close their farms due to financial difficulties, and the number of migrants from the territory of nomads is growing. It was urgent and it's not so bad, but at this rate the Stokes family will collapse sooner or later, the young man thought. And for such a bad man who sat before him, Harold thought that the breakup of the Stokes family would be useful. To which the young man right in front of him asked not to speak like that. If someone overhears them, he might misinterpret it as the intention of rebellion. According to our hero's estimates, the population, in particular the agricultural sector, and if they do not increase their returns, then most likely they will go bankrupt. That's why our hero called Jake today, who was sitting opposite him. A man like him is their agricultural inspector. Then Jake asked what the young man meant. Harold called Zen. The young man was already right there and showed the vegetables that our hero had grown. When Jake saw these vegetables, he knew he needed to eat them. Happy Zen asked not to say anything, but just to enjoy the red grotto created by Harold Sama, or he himself would become fertilizer, our hero explained, looking sternly at Jake. Looking at the vegetables in front of him, Jake began to wonder if Harold Sama himself had created this. The next moment, reaching out for the vegetables, he took it from the basket and took a bite, and then was surprised at how tasty the vegetable was. Zen confirmed his words, and our hero, looking at the happy young man, did not understand why he was so proud of this. However, this crop that he grew using his own technique became weak, and he wanted to spread his technique, so he asked Jake to help him. Having heard about help, our hero continued to explain that naturally it would cost, depending on the situation. They may need specialized equipment. 
so he decided that a guy like Jake, who is familiar with the finances and land of the Stokes family, would be ideal for this. He will be able to determine whether certain equipment can be installed and calculate the required costs. Looking at the vegetables in front of him, Jake said that if it was possible to improve their current situation, he wanted to help to the best of his ability, but there were conditions. Our hero understood that he could not agree until he heard the whole story. As he knew, and if it was his father, he would have angered him, and in the worst case scenario, he would have been sent to prison. Hearing this, Jake was very scared, and Zen and Norman, standing behind our hero, only smiled, because it was a natural reaction. So Harold explained that otherwise it would be like a new Zen and he would have more worries. Having heard about this, Zen tried to understand what our hero meant, and the young man explained that he needed to work with his head a little. Taking out the potion, the young man decided that if Jake really wanted to know about all the details, then he would show him the key to this delicious food. In his hands was a potion of life. This was a growing method in which they add a life potion to their crops and for now we can call it the life-saving method. He explained that they will share with several farmers and start testing it in the fields, and the biggest reason for them to follow this system is to reduce any financial risk. In addition, the business will be small, if the failure turns out to be fatal, they will be able to for farmers who were unable to allocate more land for the HL farming method. Even if the method is successful, they will try to limit as much as possible the spread of economic inequality between farms. Harold explained that, moreover, they would merge several farms together, since ideally the Stokes family should have had enough supplies of vital potions. And luckily, most of them were past their expiration date and should have been disposed of anyway, so they would need the original one. The young man also added that the biggest feature of the healthy lifestyle method is its growth rate. Each type of planting has differences in size and taste, but right now the growth rate is abnormally fast. Harvesting usually takes two months, but using the ZJ growing method, it bears fruit in just five minutes seven days. Hearing that our hero could harvest the harvest in just five days, Jake was incredibly surprised. However, the youth added that because of the speed, they couldn't let it go to the masses, and he feared that if cheap, high-quality products entered the market, it would undermine it. Farming outside their land had to be eliminated. Our hero thought to himself that if they also found out that he had invented a growing method, then his safety would be paramount. They would definitely be offended by him. The young man originally wanted to start after he assembled a team, but if his father, who loves money, heard about it, he would try to monopolize the ZJ method which is why they had to start small. The setting is strict, there is a limit on the yield. If they gradually gain economic flexibility, they will have the opportunity to try other crops later. Then he saw that they were all staring at him and, being incredibly angry, he asked why they were looking at him like that. Everyone was simply surprised by what our hero was saying. Jake, adjusting his glasses, sincerely asked for forgiveness. He was simply surprised by the details that the young man shared. Norman had heard some of this beforehand but he found it admirable how the young man had planned everything out. Our hero was disturbed by the fact that people admired his amateur thinking. At best, he offered ideas, but he wanted to leave the rest to them. Harold explained that he did not need any imperfections. If they felt that something was wrong, they should give him advice without delay. Everyone agreed with him. At this moment, Jake thought to himself that at such a young age, the guy discovered a revolutionary growing method, and also made a clear plan. Without a doubt, an insatiable ambition that shows no mercy to itself. Norman thought that the young man did not pay attention to the money or the honor that he could receive. He is attuned to these strong feelings of desire to help the population. He has deep compassion. Harold herself, in their opinion, had what it took to be a leader. Asking Jake for the last time, our hero asked if he would become his arms and legs. Jake, standing up from his seat, announced that he would use all his strength for Harold Sama. If Jake wanted to be useful to him, he did not use it for him. But for the pathetic population there, the hero explained. If they don't do what he suggested, they won't be able to survive because they are all weaklings. Turning to Harold, the father said that his marriage had already been arranged. Hearing this, the young man drinking tea even choked, looking carefully at his father. But then, having returned to a normal state, our hero decided to inquire about the marriage union, and who his chosen one was, from his father. The father told the young man that she was the daughter of the Sumeragi family. This will allow their Stokes family to further strengthen their pedigree. Hearing this, the mother was simply delighted with the father's idea. The same one said that they also had conditions, because they wanted an audience alone with the young man. So in two or three days they had to go to Sumaraga's domain. The young man thought about the bride, and if you remember the game, she was alone. 
The Sumeragi family is one of the noble families that helped create this country, and even today they have deep ties to the ruling house. By uniting with them, the Stokes family will receive additional prestige and a couple of extra drops of blue blood to develop their doctrine. But our hero knew that the Sumeragi family was not happy with such a misalliance. They are forced to give up their beloved daughter in order to improve their finances. This is a big blow for an aristocratic family, which is not an aristocrat and not a person at all. Ours came up with the idea that he had no worries, because he just thought that he could relax and entrust all the preparations for the implementation of healthy farms to Jake and Norman. The young man could not believe how he had to talk about engagement at such a tender age. And perhaps this means that Sumarag's possessions were right now affected by miasma, as our hero guessed. And he came up with a plan. Going to the library, the young man began to read books, reading about Anis Hisop, Gatan Fang, Nakatvara and something else. At that moment, Zen came to him again, and carefully watched our hero while he sat in the library, not suspecting anything, studying new information. Even if our hero wanted to avoid all his death flags, he couldn't act in a way that would come to the attention of the Stokes family. He decided to read about the head of the Sumeragi family. He has compassion and understanding, excellent connections. If our hero manages to win him over to his side, everything will become much simpler. This way, he can even better support the main character Rianer and others while being in the shadows. There are fears that events will go beyond the original side. It is still better to have such an ally as Tasuku, and these shows are a good way to get to Sumeragi. While studying all this, Zen approached him, watching him from afar. He was interested in what our hero was growing this time fruits the size of a house or something else, and asked if he could help the young man with anything. Harold, of course, did not like this, and he explained to Zen that it was none of his business, however. He tried to understand what Zen had forgotten here. He had to go back to work. Here Zen proudly announced that he had a day off today. Then the young man, leading him out of the office, tried to ask why the hell he had forgotten in the library. All the next time our hero was busy with papers and practicing fencing, and fell asleep with his books. When they were already riding in the carriage, the young man was asked to wake up, because he was sleeping so sweetly. The Sumeragi estate was already visible, and looking out of the carriage, our hero saw houses. They were greeted by a man, because the master and madam were already expecting our hero, so they asked him to come inside the house. Of course, the Stokes were bothered by the fact that they had to take off their shoes when entering, and even put on the sandals that were offered to them. The man who met them explained that it was part of the Sumeragi culture. He hoped that they could show respect. Our hero thought that he had folded his shoes and, perhaps, it was not quite like Harold. He understood that he did it mechanically and had to do it so that his father would not notice. The next moment they were led along the corridor and, sitting near the doors, the man explained that he had brought the gentleman and his father. Our heroes were invited to come in and then they saw a girl with her parents. The daughter of the Sumeragi family was in front of our hero. Erika Sumeragi, Rianer's comrade, with whom he had to be especially careful. Erika has a very sensitive nature, but she treats everyone this way indiscriminately, even shedding tears about monsters. Harold was the only one she hated, but feeling obligated for the Stokes's financial support, she did not turn away from him until the very end. What will happen if Erika, in addition to her amazing kindness, gains prudence and common sense, agrees to be engaged to Harold, who no longer follows the path of evil? If this is all that happens, then nothing terrible will happen, the young man thought. However, if because of this she does not become the comrade of the main character Rianer, then it will be bad. Erika is an invaluable healer for the team of heroes, they need her, and without her the entire complexity of their conquests will be immeasurably high. Even if he avoids every death flag, they will not defeat the final boss and the world will be destroyed. Our hero could not allow this, so all that remained was to leave the most negative impression about himself. Sitting down on his knees to sit at the table, our hero thought that later his conscience would torment him, but he thought that he could say nasty things. Then the father, the head of the family of the Sumeragi house, began to speak, introducing himself as Tasuku Summary Guy and then he introduced his wife Koyomi and his daughter Erika. Our hero introduced himself as Harold Stokes, explaining that it was nice to meet you. Hearing this, the young man thought to himself that he did not expect such words from his hero, and that this mouth could spew out something respectful. Turning to Erika, our hero's father chuckled and asked her to say her opinion, what she thought about Harold, because, as it seemed to him, his son was simply wonderful. The girl confirmed his words, but our hero, looking at her, only chuckled to himself because the girl's eyes were completely lifeless. He had never even seen anything like this in the game, 
and now the problem was how to convey all this to her. Here he just had a chance, because Erica's mother suggested that her husband leave Erica and Harold alone so that they could open their hearts to each other. Our hero's father also agreed. Turning to Erica, they asked to take Harold on a short tour, but be sure to return in time for dinner. The girl, getting up, invited Harold to follow her. Our hero, getting up from his seat, said that it was a great honor for him to have Erica Sama as an escort. Now the young man had to do it or die. And walking around the neighborhood of their house, our hero followed Erica. And then they stopped near a tree, and the girl decided that she could introduce herself. I turned to our hero, the girl introduced herself as Tasuku's daughter, Erika Sumeragi. Our hero also decided to introduce himself as Harold Stokes, after which silence arose between them. Turning to the tree they stopped near, Erika explained that the tree was called Cherry Blossoms, and its flowers are the symbol of the Sumeragi family. It does not grow in these places, and more than 500 years ago the then ruler settled here. He brought with him from distant lands and planted several seedlings. Looking at the tree, our hero reported that this tree was different from the cherry blossoms that he knew. The girl was very surprised that the young man knew about cherry blossoms. The young man was a little confused and explained that most likely it was just something similar to her. In general he was not interested in all sorts of flowers. Hearing this from his lips, Erika wondered if this meant that he was not interested in the Sumeragi family either. Our hero explained that she could understand as she wanted, because he didn't care. The girl was, as always, impeccable and extremely polite, which even infuriated him, although he was simply trying to change the subject. Looking sadly at the ground, Erika realized that all our hero needed was just the noble name of Sumeragi. The young man thought that it would be better if she began to hate him, that of all things he would say something vulgar. And our hero decided to say about their noble name, what was so noble about it in her opinion. Showing all his disrespect, our hero explained that he believed that the Stokes family was much nobler. At least they didn't walk around with their hands outstretched and beg from others. Hearing this, Erika even got angry, not understanding what our hero said. Harold thought that he had gone too far, because this was already a blood insult, but for some reason he was not at all surprised to hear such a thing from his character. This may interfere with his original plans. Therefore, our hero decided that it was necessary to somehow get out of the situation and gave Erica a letter, which at first she did not want to take. Our hero said that she had to shut up and take this letter. When they returned, she had to give it to her father. Turning and walking past the young man, she refused. Then the young man, laughing, said that if she wanted to see their people die in agony, then she could walk and not look back. Then turning to the young man, Erica, I wondered if he really wanted to tell her that their salvation was inside this envelope. Our hero decided to be a little mysterious, explaining that she wouldn't know until she opened the envelope. In any case, she had nothing to lose. Standing near the cherry blossoms, Erica had a choice, and she moved towards our hero, taking this letter from him. Taking the letter from our hero's hands, the girl explained that this did not mean that she believed his words. The young man explained that there was no need to believe the words, because she had to believe what she saw with her own eyes. After this journey, our hero returned to his mansion. At home, Norman greeted him, thinking that the young man was probably very tired from the road and needed to rest and gain strength. Our hero, being out of sorts, asked if Norman really didn't understand why he called him. It was necessary to report on how their advanced agricultural practices were progressing there. Norman explained that everything was fine. They immediately explained everything to the farmers and also managed to protect their arable fields without any problems. They could start testing in 10 days. This was great news for our hero, so he asked to continue listening to Jake's reports. Lost in thought, our hero thought that everything was going smoothly and Norman, it seemed to him, was also good at acting from the shadows. It's not like his parents suspected anything. He was interested to know how Sumeragi was doing there, knowing about Erika's compassion. There was no doubt that she would not miss the chance to help people suffering from miasma. Our hero was sure that she would definitely give the letter to Tasuku. Harold simply wrote down a prescription for an antibiotic and the range of miasma infections, which he estimated from the map. While this won't solve the problem itself, it will encourage Erika to eventually join the team of heroes to work together to figure things out. Our hero did not know whether Sumeragi would believe some absurd letter written by a 10-year-old boy and whether he would make medicine. All the same, he remembers and will remember this when the antidote is already used everywhere. Erika took the letter, and for now that was enough, the young man thought to himself. A few days later, fighting alongside the knight, it was very unpleasant for our hero that he had to try to hit him at least once. After all, Harold was training and called him not to the dance. But the knight explained that the young man was wrong because he was very fast, and the knight fought with all his might. 
our hero did not understand whether he would eventually be hit or whether he would get away with a couple of scratches. Get seriously acquainted with his sword, so you had to do this if life was precious or prepare for immediate death. Either way it will be a waste of time. It was probably not worth enrolling soldiers as instructors, our hero thought, struggling with this. After all, the soldiers were so afraid of hurting him and subsequent reprisals from his father that they hardly defended themselves. Our hero did not understand how he could learn real fighting techniques. After all, the soldiers fell dead before the newcomer. The young man could not understand whether there were soldiers or clowns in front of him. The young man thought that perhaps he should have asked his father to order a swordsman from overseas, but it is unlikely that this parent, who blows away specks of dust from his beloved child, is able to select a worthy teacher. At that moment they turned to him, and the young man saw a man who was addressing Mr. Harold, explaining that he had a guest. Hearing this, the young man did not understand whether there really was a visitor to him, and who was brought to him. He could not think that Harold could have any friends. At this moment, he did not at all expect that in front of him would be Erika Sumaragi, who came to visit our hero. Harold did not understand that Erika forgot here and this was just before the launch of the ZH Farms. He thought that she would certainly interfere with him and was very dissatisfied. He needed to calm down. The young man understood this and also understood why the girl came here. Did she really bring an answer to his letter? And why did they need to send Erika here as a messenger? Our hero could not guess. The girl was seated in the garden and tea was poured. Our hero can't really understand what she's up to. The next moment, heading towards the girls who were sitting in the garden and bringing Erika tea, the young man did not understand why it had come here. Such situations, it seemed to Erika, should have started with the fact that our hero made her wait. The young man explained that, unlike her, he did not have free time, so she could thank Harold for the fact that Harold had time to come at all. The girl, exhaling, was a little upset, because it was her fault that it appeared so suddenly. The next moment, our hero, seeing how upset she was, asked the maid to leave them alone and sat down at the table with her. Looking at Erica, the young man asked what she wanted, because he might have run out of patience. Erica had to hurry up and tell him why she came here. Erika firstly wanted to express the gratitude of the Sumeragi family by bowing to our hero, informing them that they managed to save a lot of their residents, so they were truly grateful. Harold realized that they saved them and it turns out that Tasuku created antibiotics and they turned out to be effective and he acted much faster than our hero expected. Exhaling, he thought, in order to cling to every straw like that, the Sumeragi seemed to actually be driven into a corner. Erika calmly answered that everything was exactly as the young man said. After all, Sumeragi now had no other choice, and in this case, the young man explained that he would expect a lot from his generosity, however, she should not have misunderstood him. Everything he advised was only a temporary remedy. The problems have not gone away, and it can also lead to side effects. Erika inquired. It turned out that the young man wanted to say that the medicine does not cure completely. The young man explained that it only cures if the symptoms are mild but not for those who are in dire straits, and he explained that he had no intention of caring that much about them. Erika realized that this was indeed the case. It was rude, but it was only natural, since they were betrothed for political reasons and material assistance in money and goods in exchange for prestige and reputational position. But still, Harold Sama went further, he created a medicine for them, trying to understand when he did it, before or after the decision to get engaged. The girl did not understand how it was possible to develop medicines in a few days. Erika sat in front of our hero, asking all these questions. After all, she wondered if there really was an outbreak of the disease somewhere else, and despite the fact that they were Sumeragi, they could not find a solution. She tried to understand how our hero managed to do this. At that moment the young man was trying to understand why the girl was here. Erika explained that there was something else. She was entrusted with giving him a letter from his father, and the young man, quickly grabbing it, decided to read what was written there. The young man realized that they had sent him with a messenger and, probably, Tasuka decided that this way the letter would seem more sincere. In the letter, the father wrote to dear Harold Kun that if he had read these lines, then Erika should have already thanked him for providing the prescription for the medicine. He asked to be allowed to express his gratitude, because he was sincerely grateful that they helped their people. He was so grateful that it is impossible to express it only in a letter. There have been no side effects yet, but they will closely monitor patients who take medications in large doses and for a long time. The contents of this letter did not surprise our hero. He thought that this was all that could not be reported, but then suddenly he noticed that there was another two-page. On page two there was a postscript, because as the young man knew, Sumaraga's domain was now in an unstable situation. 
He didn't know if any other unforeseen circumstances of unsolvable force could happen, so it was painful for them to talk about it. But he has a request for our hero. He wanted to ask him to temporarily take care of Eric at the Stokes estate. Seeing these lines, our hero was incredibly surprised and began to read further, because, probably, it was inappropriate to show such personal feelings as the head of the family, but as a loving father worried about his only daughter. At that moment, our hero was reading the letter carefully, looked at Erica, not understanding what it meant. At that moment they were brought cakes, and the girl, looking at our hero, tried to understand what had happened, and took the letter from him. Pretending that she was very surprised, the girl explained that this caused such inconvenience. Even though they were engaged, she would burden so many people here if she lived under the same roof with them. However, she explained that she had already dispatched the crew and now she could only count on Harold Sama's mercy. The young man blurted out unflattering words for the girl, and she, smiling, thought that he had probably said something. It showed our hero that the girl was very brave if she could do such a thing. Smiling Erica thanked the young man, because his praise was an honor for him, which greatly angered Harold. Knocking on the table, the young man jumped up and angrily explained that he was not going to accept such arrogant one-sided demands. Seeing how angry the young man was, the girl thought about how cold he was. He has saved so many people, but he cannot express even an iota of kindness to his fiancée. Everything was because our hero expected a lot in exchange for his generosity, however, his compensation so far did not delight him at all. Erica completely agreed with him. In this case, she simply did not dare to ask Harold Sama for more, bowing, she once again thanked him with all her heart. Seeing this, our hero did not understand what was happening, and the girl, leaving the table, hoped that he could forgive her, and our hero, watching her leave, did not understand what this meant, why he could forgive her. After all, this is just a turn of phrase, nothing more. But in any case, she somehow left too quickly, as it seemed to him and he had a bad feeling. The Stokes carriage was driving through the woods, and it was not good. It was not for nothing that people had a bad feeling from the very morning. But it was better not to whisper about it, because the townspeople could hear. Our hero was riding in this carriage and was incredibly dissatisfied, realizing what he was doing in it and what had happened. A couple of hours later, Erica left so quickly. The father thought that his son would not believe it, because he had just received a letter from Tasuku. From today onwards, Lady Erica will live in their house. Our hero explained that he had no intention of living with anyone. This all smelled very suspicious. His father asked him not to be so modest, because their families officially approved their relationship. So the young man could dare. She was supposed to arrive at the eastern gate of their domain. So Harold had to take the carriage and meet her in person. Listening to all these instructions from his father, our hero knew what he received for his actions. A one-way trip would have taken a week. It's clear that she planned this in advance and even foresaw his refusal. Hayden, he swallowed it like a fool, sticking out his tongue. The young man thought that the girl had come here to spy or what other intentions she might have had, thinking about Eric. To make matters worse, this development of events did not happen in the original story, and it was all because of this letter that our hero handed over. Now, he was reaping the fruits of what he had sown. While waiting for Erica, he saw her approaching him and it was a great honor for her to be greeted in person by Harold Sama himself. He saw that she was even smiling. The young man saw right through everything. At that moment, he was trying to understand who was next to her, because this girl was not in the game. And then Erica introduced her companion, Juno. After all, the girl took care of her since childhood and never left her. Smiling at our hero, the girl reported that Erica told people a lot about him. Harold didn't understand who Juno was. He has enough problems with Erica alone. And was this girl really someone from the Sumeragi family? Because he didn't remember her at all. New events with Erica, and even a completely unfamiliar character named Juno, it was necessary to stay as far away from them as possible, our hero decided, otherwise he might not notice how he would reach the flag of death. The young man immediately warned the girls that he did not have time to take care of them, so they could stay, but they had to not get in his way. Smiling at our hero, the girls bowed to him and thanked him. This made him very angry, if they understood everything like that, then why didn't they go home? The next moment his father asked to greet Lady Erica, the bride of the Stokes heir, and her companion Juno. Approaching the house, our hero saw that all the servants had come out and greeted the girls, and the father asked to treat them as his guests, otherwise they themselves would know what would happen to them. The young man did not understand why his father organized a public execution here. At this moment, the father turned to Harold. To express my gratitude for the warm welcome when they visited them, Lady Erica was to give Lady Erica a tour of their city tomorrow. After all, the ability to accompany a woman is a necessary skill for a noble person. 
Hearing this, our hero did not think, and Erica immediately bowed and explained that she would be looking forward to their walk, which the young man did not expect at all. Smiling at the young man, she asked him to take care of her. It turns out that from the very beginning he had no choice, as our hero guessed later, looking at his bride, who was standing right in front of him. His whole plan was crumbling before his eyes. To Muragi Estate A letter from Harold Kun that Tasuka received. Turning to his friend Kuryu, he thought about what he thought about this letter. Kuryu reported that the young man told them this very openly. He thought it was suspicious. Tasuki also thought so. But regardless of whether it is true or not, there is no benefit for the Stokes family. But, on the other hand, this letter hints at the decline of the Stokes. Kuryu thought that if so, then maybe someone was controlling them and at least he could not imagine that this letter was written by a boy. So, he was simply used as a messenger, and the question is who actually wrote this letter. Tasuki wondered if the young man wanted to help the Sumeragi family, then why did he choose such a roundabout and dubious method? After all, perhaps this is the work of someone who wants to harm the Stokes. This could be someone close to him, as well as someone who can give Harold Kun what he needs or perhaps he can freely manipulate him. It's as if he was completely subjugated to his will or this is a way to test their Sumeragi in a critical situation. Kuryu thought that there was a big risk for them to lose everything if they tried to find out something. Now they are in such a position that they can disappear without outside help. If the person who wrote the letter wanted this, wouldn't it be enough for him to simply observe without interfering in anything? But he doesn't want them to die, and this means that, with a greater degree of probability, everything that was written in the letter was true, as both men understood. Addressing Kuryu, Tasuka ordered to immediately prepare everything necessary, and use it only with the consent of the patients. Explained to them all the risks. The man obeyed and so they decided to prepare to treat people who were suffering from the effects of the miasma. At this time at the Stokes estate, the family had a big dinner, inviting everyone to eat and not be modest. The food was prepared with the finest ingredients, grown and lovingly sourced from the Stokes lands, all to please their hearts. Erica complimented their food and it looked delicious, then asked Juno if she liked the food. Of course, Juno agreed with Erika Sama's words. Our hero sat in silence and then the mother asked Harold if something had happened to the young man. The young man tried to prove to her that everything was in order. Then the mother decided to inquire about his health, touching the young man's forehead, thinking that he probably accidentally fell ill. Juna and Erika saw this and were very surprised at how the mother showed her care for her son. Our hero, embarrassed, asked her to stop this, because she could not do this in front of the guests. The mother laughed and apologized for what she did. Of course it was awkward when his mother caressed him in front of the bride. Father laughed too, because Harold was always so shy. The young man did not understand why they spoke as if he was the only one whose reputation would suffer. Weren't they themselves ashamed of all these tendernesses that they showed towards him? Our hero thought to himself. At this moment, his face spoke for itself that the young man was very angry. Then Erica drew attention to the servants who were standing nearby, which interested her very much. Our hero at this time began to eat, thinking that he was tired of these damn relatives and he wanted to disappear from the dining room as quickly as possible. The parents said that it was disgusting and it was impossible to eat like that, but our hero didn't care. At that moment, Juno and Erica were left alone in her chambers. Juno, while sorting out the girl's suitcase, had heard about this before, but the young man turned out to be a rather naughty child, as it seemed to her. Erica explained her father's fears, because he told her that perhaps the young man could be manipulated by someone and even completely subjugate his mind. Judging by his character, Harold Sama is not one of those who will calmly listen to what they say to him. And after exhaling, Juno agreed, because about the second, Erika Sama should have tried to check him, but nothing came of it. It didn't matter whether the young man tried to deceive them or help them. Until they fully figured out his intentions, they would not get rid of the threat to life hanging over the Sumeragi family. That's why Juno was here. When contacting Juno, Erika asked her to be careful, but the girl assured her that she had absolutely nothing to worry about. After all, for an agent like her, unraveling secret cases was a pleasure. When Erika fell asleep, Juno was left alone and thought about Harold Stokes. Whether all his behavior is a game, and the young man himself was connected with mysterious external forces, it would be unwise to simply sit idly by. Tasuka Sama thought about this and sent Erika here to distract the daytime and confuse him. In general, she is nothing more than bait, and the main striking force is Juno. While the head of the family is busy with everyday affairs, while the mother is completely uninterested in her son, she could strike. The girl thought that everything could have been in vain. 
the opposite side has not yet shown itself in any way, although they have given enough reason for this. Therefore, eliminating their puppets will achieve absolutely nothing. And judging by Harold Sama's behavior, there is a very high probability that his mind is being controlled. Juno thought that Tasuka Sama himself said all this. But whether it was so, the girl was actually trying to understand. But, if this was true, she would have to tinker a lot when taking out a weapon, Juno thought. The maids in the estate were chatting about how Mistress Erika walked with Mr. Bear Harold, she didn't even leave the room. But more than two weeks had passed, and everyone was very worried about her. Erika just looked out the window and enjoyed the views from it. Our hero tried his hand at fencing, and it would be better to train here than where he allegedly burned Clara. There were fewer prying eyes there, here he could give it his all, using his power and 1000 thunder and lightning to attack an invisible target. He thought about how it wasn't so bad when it happened, but it still wasn't enough. Just a basic technique to learn, but even with her, he was still very far from the original Herald. Our hero understood that if he followed his strength in the game, he could do much better. At this moment, he didn't even realize that Juno was watching him. The girl couldn't believe what she just saw. The young man swung a sword the size of himself as if it weighed nothing, with the speed of an experienced swordsman. He can also use magic, and it's no wonder he keeps it a secret. Juno didn't know if he was a threat to them, but she wouldn't know for sure until she talked to him. Now she was the only one with problems. The girl thought about what if she suddenly said something wrong that he didn't like, and whether she had a chance of staying alive after that. But at least she could disappear into the shadows at any moment, if something went wrong, she would disappear right before his eyes. Thinking about all this, the girl was about to leave, when suddenly something clanged behind her head, and she saw the sword that our hero launched into the tree. The young man asked what kind of rat it was, and asked him to stop hiding in the bushes and come out. Juno understood that the end had come for her, and she needed to figure out what to do, but she understood that she would not be able to escape. The young man saw all her secretive movements from the very beginning. He may have been ten years old, but he already had such talents that he was able to easily discover her. As soon as she was distracted, he immediately threw a sword at her, and if not for the tree, she would already be dead. And our hero thought that his hand had slipped off. He didn't know who was there, but why was this man hiding, because he came to a place where there were no people, but as a result, he ran into him. Our hero was also worried. He didn't know what to do, because he was already too exhausted to fight. And he shouted as if he was challenging someone to a fight. At that moment, Juno came out from behind the tree, and our hero was surprised when he saw her. Turning to Mr. Tunes' herald, the girl apologized. It was her fault that she was following him. Our hero tried to understand at that moment what the girl was doing here. He couldn't understand whether it was really so interesting to watch a child play with a sword. It was good that she wasn't hit by the very sword he had thrown at the tree, and he was glad that she wasn't hurt. But she had to stay out of sight so he couldn't hurt her. Turning to Juno, he explained that she was very impudent and should have known her place. Next time he will treat her so badly that she will feel very bad. The girl apologized to the young man and thought that it was all over, but she was lucky. The young man warned her that if she stumbled again there would not be another time. The hint was clearer than clear, she could not even imagine that he would only reveal it so easily. It's good that the tree stood in the path of this sword. All Juno could think about was how she could protect Mistress Erika from someone who could so easily surpass her. After all, there is such an overwhelming difference in abilities that there will be no battle. After all, he is not only strong, but also devilishly inventive. Juno understood that she could not fight our hero, realizing that it was not humanly possible at all, and it was a complete defeat. Our hero, standing in silence, decided to defuse it by asking how the princess was doing. And Juno explained that Mistress Erika was still not feeling well. She is in a very depressed mood due to the move and unfamiliar surroundings. The young man did not understand that if homesickness was so stuck, why couldn't she get out of here? Juno did not understand why the young man was so cold, because she was still his bride, because he would not lose anything if he found at least a little warmth in his heart. Of course, there were no problems, but our hero's tongue was his sworn enemy. Therefore, he began to be insolent to the girl again, because their relationship was doomed from the very beginning. He had no intention of tying himself to such terrible ties. Hearing this, Juno did not understand what Mr. Kino Harold wanted to say. At that moment, our hero realized that he had said too much, because it was impossible for anyone to find out that he was going to break off the engagement. Therefore, turning away and walking away, the young man explained that he was not obliged to tell the girl anything. Thinking that Erika was sick, our hero did not remember her being sick at all in the original story. But then he realized that there was not even such a parameter as disease, and thought that perhaps it was a flag. 
and this time, for her, and through her, everything else could come to an end. Erika at the same moment looked at the sky, being absolutely depressed. Our hero forgot his sword in the forest, so they had to return for it. There was no point in throwing away weapons that cost a lot of money. He hoped that Juno didn't touch him, he needed to pick him up before the moon went beyond some point. At that moment running past, he saw a sad ghost, and then realized that it was Erika. Seeing the girl, he tried to understand if everything was okay with her, and what she was doing here in the middle of the night. Our hero thought she was sick, but he didn't think it was a good idea. In her state of going out to breathe the coolness of the night, he understood that he did not know what to do, because he still could not help, but he could escort her to the room. Seeing how Erika was shaking, and our hero, approaching, tried to understand what she was doing here at such a time, she was sick, as far as he heard. Only a girl like her could walk here at night, although she could not stand on her own feet. And it would be better if the girl immediately returned to her room. But in fact, our hero said all this, but wanted to find out how she was, and whether everything was okay with her. As a result, he only insulted her. The young man did not understand why she was silent to all his attacks, because she was supposed to talk to him. The young man understood that he had said the wrong thing again, and at such an age, when you are faced with a bully who endlessly insults you, you can be speechless from surprise. Harold decided that he would call one of the servants to escort her out. Therefore, turning away from the girl, he said that if her condition would worsen, then she had to think on her own, he no longer cared. Then suddenly the girl asked to wait for our hero. Our hero immediately turned around at this phrase, and she wanted to ask him something. Erica explained that she had heard blatant rumors that he had burned a maid alive and wondered if this was true. Our hero now understood why she was worried. Since no one else made a secret of this, it was interesting even when the rumors would reach Erica and perhaps he should have cleared up this misunderstanding. Our hero explained that this was not true. Then the girl immediately began to smile, and the next moment our hero said that he burned not only one maid, but also his daughter, burned them and ate them since she was interested in the exact number of those he killed. Seeing his terrible grin, Eric was horrified, not understanding why our hero did this. The young man was carried away and began to say that he did not need any reason for this. They asked for it themselves with their worthless existence. For him, the network is just talking cattle. Harold killed whoever he wanted and did it all purely on his own whim. Erica asked him to shut up, but our hero said that now none of them would be alone, so now let him say thank you for killing them both. At this moment Erika, with trembling lips, asked him to stop, and our hero continued to say that in the end, these were just lower creatures. They are created only for him to eat for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Unable to bear it, Erika hit our hero in the face, being incredibly angry, and the next moment, when our hero did not answer anything, she screamed that there was no one worse than him, with tears in her eyes. Our hero tried to understand what was wrong with this, to which the girl replied that they had nothing more to talk about. This was wonderful news for our hero. Erika, turning away with tears in her eyes, apologized to him and went into the mansion. Our hero at that moment silently looked in the other direction, touching his sore cheek. Zen knocked on his door and greeted Mr. Harold. After all, he went to train today, asking the young man. Our hero explained that he was there a while ago and came to play a little. Zen, seeing our hero in a bad mood, tried to understand what happened to Mr. Harold and whether it was serious. Our hero explained that the young man could not help him because he was just tired and asked not to disturb him, so he had to go and close the door from the back side. Without turning to Zen, the young man explained. Zen thought it was strange. Harold escorted him out the door, remaining behind the door, now everything was clear to Zen, and our hero was left alone. Thinking about it as a reward somehow didn't work for him. At that moment he thought about Erika and the expression on her face when she slapped him. After all, these were indeed harsh words. Harold told her to leave him, so sharp that it seemed too much for her, and she could not stand it. Our hero understood that he could not flinch before this. He understood that if he did not get used to at least this, then it was simply impossible to endure what awaited him in the future. After all, everything had to go according to the plan that our hero came up with in advance, based on the plot of the game. Morning came, the young man opened his eyes, thinking that he had slept for a very long time. After all, it was already midday, and he still felt the pain on his cheek. Harold thought that some fan from the game would say, wow, and replay the episode several times to enjoy the aesthetics of the moment. The young man of course apologized to the fans, but he was not that kind of person. The next moment, a sound was heard in our hero's stomach, and he thought that he should have gone to the dining room to eat. Then a friend, coming to the dining room, our hero met with Norman. After waiting for him for a very long time, our hero saw that he had finally decided to come. Norman heard that the young man got up late today, and perhaps this was accumulated fatigue. 
The young man asked to calm down because everything was fine. He just couldn't sleep. Now the main thing is this problem of their agricultural farms, because he has already discussed with him the general secrecy and lack of labor. The butler confirmed that this was the case. They then decided to hire complete strangers from certain lands, provided that they would somehow achieve their loyalty. This is exactly what our hero wanted to talk about with the butler today. Harold thought that if they gave some kind of trading guild, force them to buy the rights to the lifestyle method, and then live from these percentages like normal feudal lords. Let this guild deal with the farmers, the farm laborers, or whoever they had at all. Having heard about the trade guild, Norman inquired, and the young man explained that the scheme was simple, something that a child would have thought of. They give to traders, traders to farmers, and everyone lives well. He would get his share of the invention and wouldn't worry about anything else. This was in theory, but our hero did not know where to find a guild that would not desert and go to another feudal lord who was more accommodating. Norman also didn't know where to find such a guild, so he wondered about it out loud. Our hero explained that he asked him where to get it, because this is exactly what he wanted to ask him and Jake about. Norman explained that they do not have a reliable connection of course, they have authority of a certain nature, but it is still not enough to intimidate a large guild, and all sorts of small ones will not cope with the assigned task. Our hero thought that his parents probably had connections and great authority, but he could not initiate them into the secret of the life-saving method. Nevertheless, Norman believed that Mr. Keir Harold had a brilliant idea to force the traders and do nothing themselves, he certainly would not have thought of such a thing. Our hero didn't bring up what good would this brilliant idea be if they couldn't use it. In any case, it was necessary to enlighten Jake, maybe he would come up with something. Knocking on the door, Zen wanted to see Mr. Penty Harold, but then entering the door he saw that the young man was not there, and probably our hero was training again, so he decided to visit him later. Then a friend, passing by the room, saw Erica sitting on the sofa, completely alone. Erica, seeing the young man, tried to ask who he was. The guy introduced himself as Zen, explaining that everyone here knew him. He was trying to figure out where her companion, Madame Juno, had gone. Erica explained that she had some personal business in town, so she left. Then Zen became interested in what the girl was doing here, and he decided to guess that she was probably waiting for Mr. Teddy Harold, only he was not there. Erica looked at him incomprehensibly, and Zen thought that it was necessary to bring her up to date, because he had already checked the office and said that he could easily go anywhere he wanted here. Lately the young man had always been very busy, and he was afraid that the young man might overwork himself. Erica just looked at the guy and Zen thought that there was something wrong with her. Erica then explained that Zen probably doesn't know that Master Harold kills servants with his magic at the slightest whim. Zen explained that these were just ridiculous rumors. Stokes has such an ominous reputation that people begin to imagine all sorts of things, and he didn't believe it, so he suggested that Erica not believe it either. He tried to figure out who could even tell her this and scare her. The next moment, the girl explained that she asked Mr. Batur Harold about this personally, and he confirmed it. Zen must have known the murdered woman, since she also worked here, not understanding whether the young man really did not suspect anything. Zen knew it was bad. Erica continued to talk about how she could blindly follow Mr. Harold like him. She didn't understand how she could accept this. Remembering how the young man spoke to her, she did not understand how she could forgive him for killing someone. Even though she was his fiancée, at least she was here to save her people, and even though that was the only way she could be of use to the Sumeragi family. Even if these feelings got in the way, she couldn't bring herself to give up on them. The girl explained that she would never be able to suppress these feelings. No good goal will force her, and this is the only thing she could think about now, Erica screamed with tears in her eyes. She sincerely apologized to the young man because she showed herself in an unsightly manner, so when she ran away, she apologized to him. Zen thought that the despair in which Lady Erica was, and in which she drowned, were just illusions, the world that awaits her was very kind. And Mr. Kendi Harold, in order to save the woman and child, was not afraid to be branded as a mad killer. A girl who, for the sake of her family and people, is trying to sacrifice her true feelings. These two were similar, being young they stuck to their principles and their morals. So would it really be more correct for them to miss each other and drown in enmity and misunderstanding? All this was somehow wrong, Zen thought. Some have both strength and kindness, so they must and simply must reveal their true selves to each other and go everywhere together. The next moment, turning to Erica, Zen decided to accompany her somewhere with him. Mentally, he apologized to Mr. Gileo's Herald, in fact he was afraid that his soul would someday fly into pieces, and although he was afraid of his anger, he still could not allow it. 
Zen knew that if Harold turned away from the ray of light that could melt the thorns piercing his heart, he would turn away from those brilliant eyes and lose him in some terrible way, and of course he regretted the moment when he could still have saved him. He will never forgive himself for not trying to save Mr. M Harold. Even if the young man was inept, good for nothing, even if after this he would not want to see him because he needed Lady Erica. Therefore, the young man, turning to Lady Erica, asked to give him a minute. The girl had to hear something from his opinion, and the girl agreed. So I asked where they needed to go. The young man, smiling, led her to the office. He said that he could enter through all doors. The next moment she was trying to understand why he dragged her, and the young man asked her to be quiet. Mr. Pichel Harold seems to go after hearing this, she thought it was a joke. The girl couldn't understand what Zen was doing. He also apologized to her and asked her to be quiet until Mr. Kinsey Harold spotted them. The next moment, Harold walked through the doors, not understanding why Zen was right in front of her, getting in his way. Seeing Mr. Carmen Harold, Zen was very nervous, and he did not understand that the dog had forgotten in his room. The young man explained that he knocked, but no one answered. He thought it was strange, so he came in. But if no one answers, then there was no one, Harold said. At this moment, our hero did not suspect that Erica was sitting and eavesdropping. Not even understanding how she ended up here, everything turned out in such a way that she didn't even have time to come to her senses. Watching from the closet, the girl didn't understand what Zen was thinking. It was too disrespectful to lock up your master's guest in such a place. But now was not the time to worry about that. At that moment, Zen said that he was here for a reason, but with a report. Having heard about the report, our hero asked him to tell everything. Zen said that it was not easy to talk about this, but it seemed to him that rumors about Clara were already crossing all imaginable boundaries. At the market this was all they talked about, he was even pestered by merchants and townspeople, everyone else too, not to mention famous personalities here in the castle. They begged and threatened him, but the youth explained that he did not say anything. Zen also swore that he was dumb of all dumb, something had to be done before Harold's reputation finally sank below the bottom of the cesspool. After all, the young man didn't even hear what the townspeople were making up, saying that he ate them, and skinned them alive, and all sorts of other bad things. Our hero just exhaled, because it was just interesting what Zen thought about this. You will never expect anything smart from him, the young man said. Zen was trying to figure out if Mr. K Harold wasn't going to do anything about it. Then our hero explained that perhaps he suggested sending a herald and announcing publicly that Clara and Colette had safely disappeared into the village of Blush, and that everyone could go and check. Hearing this, Erica couldn't believe her ears. Zen explained that of course he did not want this, because he was not exactly a fool to suggest such a thing. Then our hero asked him to stop thinking about useless things. If his parents somehow found out that they were alive, of course they would suspect him of this. He no longer said that their lives would be in danger again. The decision was made and Zen could perceive their murder as a factor that had come true. Zen understood this, but did not understand why our hero did not want to tell Lady Erica about this, because she was simply incredibly depressed by all these rumors. To which our hero explained that he would never tell her this, with such a face that even Zen did not understand it. Erica was also surprised by this look. Zen didn't understand why he didn't want to tell. Our hero couldn't tell him what he needed to make Erica hate him like in the original story. Otherwise, you cannot avoid the flag of death. Of course, Zen's kindness helped a lot, but it could also lead to his death, and Harold needs to come up with a suitable reason, so that Zen does not even think about spilling the beans. Therefore, our hero explained that she burst into tears like a girl. He did not know tears for him, that he seemed to have killed someone, or tears of sympathy for the innocent murdered mother and child. But it doesn't matter anyway, these are tears for someone else. After this, she can only be considered a naive girl. She is too kind, but this is the kindness of the weak, which will not help. If such a person goes hand in hand with him, he will only receive countless lifelong sufferings. Now Zen understood why the young man kept Erica at a distance. He was worried about Lady Erica, but the young man explained that it was not only for her sake, but for the sake of both of them. As if he might marry some annoying crybaby who does nothing but cry about everything. Zen asked if this meant that Mr. Harold had no intention of marrying Lady Erica. Now our hero realized that the young man had guessed. Then Zen tried to understand what the talk of engagement was all about. Then our hero decided to explain to him that this was just an engagement bought with money. After all, several years ago, due to the miasma that affected their forests, the Sumeragi lands quickly fell into decay. The catastrophe was so unprecedented for the entire continent that other countries and feudal lords were in no hurry to help them, taking a wait-and-see approach, trying to understand whether they could survive at all and whether they would not drag their benefactor into the abyss. 
and only the Stokes, for the sake of the marriage desired for their pedigree, did not think about anything. Then Zen asked whether such a break in the engagement would be fatal for Sumeragi. Our hero explained that if he was so concerned, he had already taken action when they were in Sumeragi's domain. He asked Erika to deliver a letter for Tasuki Sumeragi. The girl was surprised what letter the young man was talking about, and Zen too. Harold said it was a letter. In the letter he wrote a method to protect against the miasma, although it was more of a prediction of the likely extent of the infestation, if the area was only slightly polluted with medicine, they would be able to establish their forest production. In addition, he was going to offer them his life-saving method. It's true that he had not yet fully completed all the tests, so he wrote vaguely in the letter that he was going to share some technologies. And regarding the breaking of the engagement, he wrote that they were ready to do it. With medicine and healthy living methods, they are quite capable of surviving the era of shock, unlike some. By then they will have restored the timber industry and will not need outside help. Therefore, even if the engagement is broken off, they will not suffer much. At this moment Erika, listening to everything that our hero said, could not believe her ears. The next moment he asked Zen if he understood everything that Harold told him. The young man spoke only in general terms. Speaking of the medicine and the letter, it was Harold who planned everything to such an extent. Our hero realized that the young man understood everything. And since he was so smart, I would like to warn him about his extremely unenviable future. Then our hero asked to come closer. After all, Harold was already talking about the imminent collapse of the Stokes, it's time for him to start looking for a richer gentleman before he turns into a homeless person, or as they call it, a beggar tramp. Hearing this, Zen could not believe his ears because they were going to use their miracle farms to prevent this. Our hero explained that he would delay the agony a little, but still something needed to be done about their ruinous taxes and senseless spending. But the young man did not understand why he had to do this alone for all of them, so they had to come up with something themselves. Zen, on the other hand, tried to understand what would happen to the people living in the Stokes' domain. The young man didn't know it, but at least he thought that Tasuku Sumeragi would be okay. Erika didn't understand what our hero was getting at, just like Zen. Harold explained that he asked in the letter to take care of all these refugees in the event of the fall of the Stokes family, it has always been like this with these weaklings. If he himself did not take care of them, then they would also die of hunger, but our hero did not need this. This Tasuku of course may not fulfill this request, but he sold him so many servants, so he believed in him. This was the backstory in the game, and someone already knows too much, so our hero wondered what it was like to keep everything a secret by turning to Zen. Zen thought that he understood everything turning to Mr. Pernik Harold, saying that he would not tell anyone, not a single living soul. At that moment, he thought that Erika was listening to all this behind him. Our hero believed him and asked him to get out before he changed his mind. In fact, Zen wanted to do just that, but asked Mr. Pana Harold what he was going to do next. Harold did not understand why the young man was interrogating him like that and why he was pestering him. Zen then asked if the young man was going to practice fencing today. Our hero didn't understand about fencing. What is the connection between him and fencing, and then Zen probably didn't tell him that fencing was his secret passion. Therefore, I simply dreamed of seeing the legendary art and inimitable style of Mr. Pana Harold, and he asked me to take him with me. He'll just stand aside and watch. Our hero thought at that moment. Harold thought it was necessary to introduce the chatterbox to lightning, and it was good that he volunteered. He just needed to try out some special equipment. At this moment the young man took out two swords. Seeing this, Zen did not understand what Mr. T Harold was doing and why he needed two swords. It was probably some kind of special technique for fighting with two swords, and he thought that the young man was not really going to make him his sparring partner. Our hero, taking Zen away, asked not to strain, he would not cut him. It wouldn't be interesting at all, he would just have to run away as quickly as possible if he didn't want to die, because movement is life. Zen couldn't figure out if the young man had decided to turn him into a target. With these words, they left the door and Zen asked Harold to be gentle with him. The next moment, Erika came out of the closet. She didn't have a single thought, and so she walked to her room. She only then thought about what she heard now, and then ran to her room. Seeing Juno, the girl greeted Erika with a smile. Seeing her in tears, Juno was scared. Erika, running into the room, turned to Juno, saying that she needed to make sure of something urgently. Everything sounded convincing, especially when it came to medications. So Erika wanted Juno to check if what Harold said was true. After all, it was impossible to create a new medicine in a few days. This is an unknown infection, it has not yet been fully studied by them. Juno thought that Erika was probably trying to convey to her that Mr. Harold had the gift of foresight. After all, he predicted the Sumeragi crisis before it happened. The young man was hinting at something like this, 
But for now, all they could be sure of was that he had developed a cure to save Sumeragi. And of course this must have taken a lot of time. Juno thought that this was all very strange, he had phenomenal abilities that he even saw her behind a tree and after that did not notice someone hiding in the room, perhaps he wanted Mrs. Erica to hear it, but why was not clear. But to come up with such a plan at this age, what will he be like when he grows up? Juno was already shaking with excitement, having listened to everything that Erica had told her before, the girl thought. But unfortunately, it is unlikely that their romance was destined to take place, because enemies at that age who inspire boundless horror must remain children forever. Our hero thought that it had been three weeks since Erica slapped him in the face. A month from the beginning of their visit, somehow everything was suspicious. He did not understand when the girls would finally leave their house. However, he thought that they could do whatever they wanted, because he was busy. Harold was wondering how to find a guild that he would then milk. While our hero was sitting in his office, they knocked on his door and asked if Mr. Benton Harold was there. He asked to come in. At that moment Norman came in, apologizing for the intrusion, explaining that Lord Hayden urgently demanded his presence. The Lord explained that, as our hero probably knew, Lady Areca's health left much to be desired. Therefore, he heeded their persistent requests and decided to release them into the domain of Sumeragi. Our hero, hearing this, was incredibly happy. But in front of his father, he pretended that it was such a pity for him, he really didn't want to part with her. At that moment, the father said that he would not have to do this, because Harold would go with them. Hearing this, the young man could not believe what he heard. The father told the young man that he would stay with them for a short time to strengthen their relationship. Our hero did not understand why he had to do this. The father explained that Lady Erica is the most important pearl in the Sumeragi domain, and our hero wanted to get the pearl, as it seemed to his father. Harold had to be attentive to his bride and not forget that she was his future wife and the mother of his children. Our hero needed to win over the girl to charm her now, this was his most important task. Hearing this, our hero did not understand what his father was talking about. He probably just wanted to show everyone around him that everything was fine between them and marriage was already a done deal. It couldn't have been worse because he needed to stay away from the girl. Going with her to her lair is like stepping on a landmine yourself. But then our hero thought that this could be a great opportunity to spread their ZH method. He will negotiate with Tasuku Sumeragi and sell them the technology on behalf of the Stokes. He also planned to do this after conducting all the interesting experiments. Now of course was not the best time, but since Harold would be visiting Tasuku Sumeragi he could do it. Our hero decided to go now, it was the most important thing and it was the best option that he came up with. He simply might not have had another such opportunity. If they wanted a bet, then Tasuku would agree. Our hero, turning to his father, understood everything and decided that he would go right now to prepare for this trip. The father, laughing, thought that our hero had already got everything under control since he was so worried, then their relationship seemed to have deepened completely. Our hero thought to himself that his father could have provided everything for him to the true heir of the Stokes, and thought that it was more likely to get away from him, and preferably forever. Village of Blush. Addressing the man, the stranger asked him, because he wanted to know some information. The man explained that he was actually looking for a woman named Clara Emerald. At that moment, somewhere deep in the wilderness, the girl was hanging up the bed linen, thinking that her work was finished with the linen, and she thought that she had done it. Looking at the beautiful weather, she felt a pleasant breeze. It's been five months since they left and still everything. It seemed like she was in some kind of dream. Clara recalled with horror that day when she was supposed to be executed by a feudal lord and she would have left this world forever, but suddenly a boy who was only a year older than her daughter gave her a helping hand. Mr. Harold, thinking about him, Clara began to wonder if everything was all right with him, perhaps it was possible to somehow send a message and find out. But she understood that she should not even think about it. The girl was strictly forbidden to contact the Stokes family. If they are discovered, it will cause nothing but trouble for Mr. Harold. Clara could not repay him with evil for good. Then the girl greeted her and Clara saw Leona. After asking Clara, Leon was wondering if she had seen where her Reiner had disappeared this morning. Clara said that she and Colette went to the farm to buy milk. Leon was glad because she thought so. Clara apologized very much to Rainer because he always brings their milk too, and she told Colette not to do this. Leon explained that everything was in order because this child really wanted to join the knightly order, so let him train his body, it would be useful for him. Leon, turning to Clara, said that she could load him as she wanted and could be stricter with him, saying goodbye to her friend. Clara also said goodbye to her. Perhaps she should have prepared cookies for the arrival of these two, Clara thought. Then an unfamiliar voice was heard behind him, asking if Clara Emerald was in front of him. Hearing this, the girl tried to understand who was asking her. 
The young man wanted to get straight to the point and was interested in whether she knew anything about a boy named Harold Stokes. The young man explained that there were rumors in the Stokes domain that this boy had killed a servant and could she confirm or deny this. Clara did not understand who this man was and why he was asking her about this. Perhaps the Stokes sent him and then he would have attacked her as soon as he heard her name. But in any other case, she explained that she did not know what the man was talking about and asked to be left alone. The guy will leave her alone today, but he will come again. The girl thought that perhaps the feudal lord really had suspicions and what would then happen to poor Mr. Harold. Turning to the Lord God, the girl asked to protect Mr. Tsui Harold. At this moment our hero, along with Erika, her maid, returned to the Sumeragi estate. And Erika's father Tasuku greeted him, who, seeing our hero, smiled at him. After all, they must have been tired after a very long journey, and he wanted to order them to be shown to their room, wishing them a pleasant rest. But our hero had an important conversation with Tasuku, so he suggested finding time in his schedule to be more lively. The young man understood that he could only speak normally in the presence of his parents. The young man realized that this would make the man angry, because whoever would be angry in his place, Harold thought to himself. Tasuku explained that he, however, still had things to do today, but invited Harold to meet tomorrow, asking our hero if it was convenient for him. The young man agreed and understood that the man was not angry. But this is Tasuku, and still as cold-blooded as in the original story. Turning to Tasuku-sama, Juno approached him and was wondering what Juno had prepared. Juno gave him a report on the state of affairs in the Stokes domain and a report on Harold. Tasuku wanted to read it later and thank the girl for her work because she did it well. Juno thought that however, the successes were not so outstanding because Harold's three close associates were silent and said absolutely nothing about him. At least she managed to find out something from Zen. In any case, this meant that the young man had impeccable control of information. Her spies discovered that Zen, as Harold's confidant, often visited farms and fields. But for what, she never found out. These farmers were extremely suspicious and distrustful of all newcomers. Penetrating into their environment and finding out something from them will be very difficult and will require even more time, as Juno realized. And as unfortunate as it was, it's more difficult to figure out the future from here. Then suddenly a man turned to her and she saw the devil himself, realizing that the young man had returned, asking if the young man had managed to find out something. The guy explained that the woman calling herself Clara Immerl really lives in the village of Blush. After hearing him talk about a woman calling herself Clara, the girl didn't understand whether he really couldn't meet her in person. The guy explained that he met her in person, but she did not talk to him. But she definitely knows Harold Stokes. And then Juno realized that in this case she was left with no other choice, she would have to visit her herself. Our hero, sipping his tea, thought about the fact that Tasuku was delayed and his healthy farming method was in his hands. Initially, the young man thought with its help to slow down the fall of the Stokes family, but what a help it would be for the Sumeragi family if this technology got to them long before the start of the game events. Only a year after the start, Rianer and the others will find salvation from the miasma, but now if Tasuku is on his side, they will have more opportunities to support the team of heroes, and it will be easier for him to avoid the flag in death. That's why Harold wrote that letter for Tasuku and thought it was worth taking the risk and going down a path that wasn't in the game. Of course, the effect of the life potion here is not the same as in the game, so Tasuku needed to make more prototypes to sell it, and they need to further improve the quality of the technology. Until now, he and his friends had done everything right, but now they could not move forward due to a lack of manpower. Also, they could not spread the method no matter how hard they tried, when the game scenario started, there would be no help from Tasuku. The only way to avoid the flag of death and solve this here now is what he held in his hands was the most important thing, to do everything to implement his ZH method. Tasuku, turning to our hero, apologized for keeping him waiting because his work was a little delayed. The young man thought that Tasuku was overwhelmed with problems. Although it looked like this, it has recently become easier thanks to the medicine that our hero created and bowing to the young man, he was sincerely grateful. The young man asked to raise his head and not clown around, and he did not do this for the sake of some useless gratitude. Tasuku explained that he could not help but thank him, because he did not know what the young man was thinking about when he decided to help them. But still the unshakable truth is that thanks to him, the situation has changed for the better. All sorts of insults again burst out of our hero's mouth because he would come to the point of bowing to a child. Tasuku should have been ashamed of his own worthlessness. To himself, our hero thought that Harold would stop talking about this nonsense. Tasuk had nothing to answer to this. Well, as far as he was concerned, he was happy to meet only a young man whose future was full of growing expectations. 
Then our hero suggested that he continue wagging his tail and at the same time help him. After all, this is the very reason why our hero wanted to talk to him as Tasuku guessed. But as it seemed to him, the young man moved too hastily to the point without all the necessary precepts. Our hero explained that he had no time to conduct tea ceremonies here and placing the folder in front of him, the young man asked to read this first. On the folder it was written about the organic farming method. It was a report on prototypes of crops grown using the life potion. Comparison chart, sales volume, and at that moment he read the most important detail, namely that the yield is doubled compared to traditional farming methods. Seeing Tasuku's face, our hero realized that he liked his idea. Tasuku explained that the contents were too unbelievable. The young man added that although it was incredible it was a fact. As far as our hero noticed, he assumed that Tasuku would have doubts. Our hero thought that it was all really so doubtful, because probably the person simply did not believe him. Just to categorically assert and end the negotiations there, it's too ridiculous to do so. No matter how good the music sounds, for it to be the truth, he will still listen to all his arguments. After all, he was the one who saved Sumeragi when he taught him how to make medicine. True or false, the audition was free. But did our hero really want to achieve something by showing this document with these huge harvests? The young man said that if he wanted it for himself, he could just take it. After all, it was just a copy. Tasuku thought that in cooperation with Juno, Harold is not someone's puppet, and there is a high probability that he acts of his own free will, watching our hero. It was impossible to manipulate a person to such an extent. Having personally encountered him, Tasuku was now convinced of this. But nevertheless, the words of our hero were his game. Tasuku could have said right now that he didn't believe him and stopped the negotiations, and then run the method in mode based on the tips in the manuscript. And knowing all this, the young man still gave him the initiative in negotiating, but what if this is the first act of prelude before the main action, he thought about Tasuku. Or looking at the folder in front of him, he thought that there was something wrong with this method, so the young man allows Sumeragi to check it. Then it was too dangerous to refuse negotiations, because the possible one had to be eliminated. Tasuku decided that he would listen to Harold's main proposal and try to better understand his true motives. Tasuku then asked to be allowed to listen to his proposal. The young man, sighing, explained that of course he would allow him to do this, otherwise the negotiations would not progress anywhere at all. And then Tasuku asked our hero what his proposal was. Harold wanted to assume that everything written in the document was true, then what did Tasuku think about it? He explained that this was an amazing discovery, after its implementation there would be no special problems with it, all the land could be transferred to work using the new method. Once it gains a certain degree of dominance, it will allow it to spread throughout the country. The pressing question then was whether he would monopolize it, and Tasuku explained that if a limited number of people monopolized the resources, it would invariably cause controversy in the future. He was not so stupid as to surround himself with enemies for the sake of immediate profit. After listening to all this, our hero thought about who he thought he was, but he passed. And Harold explained that he thought the same thing, because there was nothing wrong with getting rich through the lifestyle method, but being an enemy to everyone around him was a real hassle. He came to propose to him, then he had to let him be heard there, turning to our hero, he asked Tasuku. They say that the young man explained about Tasuku that he would become his with the developer, and that a loser like him was lucky. Our hero was going to enlist such a loser as Tasuku as one of the developers of the ZH method. But Tasuku did not understand what our hero was talking about, because he did not participate in any developments. But the key word was, yet, that he did not participate, but now they use the name Sumeragi together everywhere, so Tasuku will have to take the rap for everything. Tasuku didn't understand why Sumeragi didn't like the name Stokes. If you think about it now, in a private conversation his behavior completely changes, and then Tasuku realized that the young man was hiding his abilities from his parents. If the head of the Stokes and his wife had learned about Harold's skill, at the conclusion of the engagement they would not have failed to boast about it, in a letter or in a personal meeting. And also details about the family, hinting at their imminent collapse, which our hero wrote about in the letter that Erica gave. Tasuku asked our hero if he thought that it was better for his parents not to know about the healthy lifestyle method. The young man explained that it was necessary to understand the nature of his parents. If they get wind of this, exactly what Tasuku said will happen, they will monopolize the ZH method. The young man himself did not have enough pawns to pull it all off. If they simply increase the number of farmers, they will lose control, and their farming method will no longer be theirs. After listening to his assumption, Tasuku understood what our hero was talking about. But he did not understand why the young man came to him, given the profit, anyone would agree to this idea. Our hero explained that of all the losers around, Tasuku was the easiest to deal with, 
But if he refused like an idiot, Harold would find two and three others like him. But he thought that this would not be necessary. Looking at Harold, Tasuku did not understand whether the young man was really so sure that he would accept his offer. Our hero confirmed his words because he knew that Tasuku had no other choice. Tasuku couldn't believe how confident our hero was and didn't understand what made him think that way. He did not believe that he would take such a position without any reason. Rather, the young man looked like a person who, using logic, cut off his opponent's path to retreat in advance, but when the young man did this to him, Tasuku tried to understand it. And then he realized that same letter, medicines to protect against miasma. The man could not believe that even then our hero did this. The young man asked if Tasuku had not yet realized this. Then it came to this person. For Tasuku Sumeragi Dono, out of the two, this engagement was more painful for him because he was forced to sacrifice his daughter for economic support. This is exactly how our hero's letter began. Meanwhile, his family imposed wasteful taxes on the population of their lands in order to live in undeniable luxury. A riot was just around the corner in the Stokes domain. Therefore, our hero gave him the only chance to snatch his precious daughter from a family firmly on the path of destruction. Firstly, he offered an antibiotic, which was written about on a separate page, using it to treat patients affected by miasmas. Secondly, they had to create a line of defense based on the map of the greatest spread of miasma. Third, take advantage of the technology that will offer them in the near future to revive their economy. By doing this, the Sumeragi family will be able to restore their holdings without the support of the Stokes. With that said, these are the three important conditions that will determine whether his engagement to Erika Sumeragi will end. This geoscience clamp is the same technology that our hero spoke about in the letter. Tasuku did not believe that the young man could have calculated the situation so far. But all this, our hero did not understand why it mattered, because one might think that he would change his answer only because of this. This was definitely not the case, it was very tempting for him to jump at this opportunity without thinking. But what was the reason for him to be so worried about the Sumeragi family? Even if our hero tried to tell him this, nothing would come of it. After all, no one but him can comprehend the essence of what is happening. The young man asked the surprised Tasuku what he finally decided if he could not trust him, then the conversation was over. Tasuku, looking at our hero, thought that despite the fact that the young man has come so far, he still gives him the right to decide. He knew that if he accepted the offer, the Sumeragi family and Sumeragi's people and Erika's future could be saved. But if he refuses, he will have to accept the engagement, and the Sumeragi family will still have the support of the Stokes. If he does this, then the young man will lose, and all the efforts spent on spreading the ZJ method will lead to nothing. And yet, despite this, the young man strictly adheres to the form of negotiations. He gave Tasuku a choice that didn't put them at a disadvantage, all of which was so hard to comprehend. Therefore, turning to Harold Kun, Tasuku explained that he would accept his offer. The young man of course knew this and should have been praised for such a quick decision. Our hero asked to prepare the fields and people of Sumeragi, in the near future he will drive their life science, know how into their heads, in the first few days this will be enough. For the future, our hero explained that he would need a trading company or an entire guild with a large reach and completely controlled. Therefore, he left this question to him to decide, turning to the loser Tasuku. Tasuku understood this, because they are using this company to capture other markets and promote technology, so they will gradually spread influence throughout the country and continent. Our hero realized that she had more brains than all the other six of him. Then if our hero does not need anything else, and if he needs something, he will do everything possible to prepare it for our hero. Tasuku asked to demand everything from him, without any restrictions. At that moment, our hero thought that this was his chance. Harold ordered Tasuk to find him a stronger instructor while he was here, he wanted to gain as much combat experience as possible. While at Sumeragi's residence, our hero was finally starting to come to life while sitting in the hot springs. The only moment of supreme bliss that he could only experience in Sumeragi's domain. After all, the Stokes, as you know, do not have such a culture of ablution. Our hero reflected that he was able to easily come to an agreement with Tasuku, and it seems that he very quickly found a sparring partner for him, so things were going well and our hero could not stop smiling. Suddenly he saw a Sakura pedal that fell straight into his pool, thinking about how aesthetically pleasing it all looked. Sitting in front of Tasuku and his wife and daughter, Juno seemed to have something to report to them. By order of Mistress Erika, she watched Mr. Brinish Herald for a long time. Erika apologized for the fact that she arbitrarily used spies, but there was something she definitely had to check, no matter what. Tasuk was wondering what it was and turning to her father, Erika asked if he knew the rumors that Mr. Harold allegedly killed her child's maid. Tasuku heard about this, because the report noted that such rumors were circulating in the markets and streets of the city. 
the girl wanted to make sure that these rumors were not true. Hearing this, Tasuku asked if she was claiming that the parent and child were alive. Erika explained that in order to find out the truth, she enlisted the help of Juno and her team. Turning to Juno, Erika asked her to compliment, and Juno said that the rumor mongers turned out to be inaccurate. Clara's maid, her daughter, currently lives in the small village of Blush, outside the Stokes' possession. Since the girl did not change her name, it was not difficult to find her, but one of them flatly refused to talk about the incident. Then Juno personally went to her. Knocking on her house, Juna asked if a girl named Kalara lived here, and the girl opened the door, trying to understand who was in front of her. Juno sincerely apologized for such an unexpected visit and introduced herself as Juno, being a representative of the Sumeragi family. There was something she needed to know from Clara. The girl understood that Clara should have already guessed that even if she had not mentioned it, it concerned Mr. Kaz Harold Stokes. Clara now realized that it was her man who had come recently and Juno explained that this was so, apologizing if the subordinate behaved impolitely. But I wanted to tell you that at the moment Erica from the Sumeragi family and Harold Stokes are preparing for the wedding however, due to Mr. Kana Harold's possible involvement in the murder, the Sumeragi family is expressing their concerns. At this moment Carla, in his imprudence, wanted to say that Mr. Harold did not do this. Juno did not believe that Mr. Chilean Harold was capable of such a thing. After all, Carla was alive and well. The problem is that Mr. Harold Sam is spreading such rumors. Juno said that Harold took on the stigma of being a killer. He personally pleads guilty to such an act, enduring the hatred and contempt of peasants and townspeople. Although he doesn't show it, he's actually extremely exhausted. After hearing what Juno told her, Carla was depressed and surprised at the same time. Juno said that she has no intention of revealing the truth to everyone. However, if Clara tells everything that happened, Mr. Bo or Harold may gain a valuable supporter in her person, so she asked if Clara could help her save this young man. Remembering Mr. Harold, Clara realized that it all happened because of her. At that moment, she fell to her knees in front of Judo and the girl tried to cheer her up. Juno could roughly understand what happened between them and most likely she would not dare to share the truth, but Clara could talk to her with this in mind. But even if she could end up harming him, she would still do everything she could to help Mr. Harold and Miss Erica. Clara explained that she could tell her and then asked her to go with her to her house, because this was not something she could tell while standing on the porch. Clara explained that she too, even if she just does, needs protection. She will do anything to help Mr. Harold. It all started when Clara almost wounded Mr. Brian Harold, and after that they wanted to execute her in order to free her from the revenge of Mr. Hayden, the head of the family, Mr. Kins Harold lied. He said he was going to use her as a test subject for magical experiments. The young man locked Clara in prison, gained time himself, and prepared an escape plan. He finally took her out with her daughter. The crew, a house in a new place, household items and money for the first time were also provided to her by Mr. Harold. Mr. Harold continues to bear the mark of a killer, now worrying about the fate of Clara and her daughter. Juno believed that he did everything just to protect them. Then Erica's friend was about to leave the room, Tasuku asked where she was supposed to go. Erica wanted to apologize to Mr. Harold. She didn't know anything and didn't try to find out, she just poured out her feelings on him, and even raised her hand to him. Erica explained that she might never forgive. But the father explained that he could not allow this, the young man was risking so much to protect them, now that they knew his secret, they had to keep it and not divulge it. Does the young man find out that the details have been passed on to someone he can't yet trust? Harold will become even more careful and alienate even more than he already did. Approaching his daughter, the father understood that this girl wanted to help him, and it was normal that she wanted to apologize. However, it really comes from the knowledge that she has offended him, and can she solemnly swear that she is not apologizing to console herself? At that moment, the girl began to shake and turning to her father with tears, Erica did not understand what she could do, if she could not correct her mistake and even bow her head to apologize, what could she do then? Patting her on the head, her father explained to Erica that she could become the person who would support Harold Kun in everyone. He was an exceptional young man, but at the same time too exceptional, and this strength often pushes him away. If she wanted to atone for her actions, she should not have begged for forgiveness, but tried to get closer to him. Watch what he is trying to achieve, trust him, and become the one who tries to understand him. It will definitely be a challenge. Harold is so brilliant that, although he will need allies, he will probably have no room for friends. Tasuku is sure that even for Erika, his bride, no matter how much she devotes herself to him, there will be no exception, and their hearts may never be destined to meet. Does the girl have the determination to believe in such a person and follow him? Her father asked. 
But Erica only remained silent, and he explained that she did not need to answer right now, she could decide what to do by watching him. And now Tasuku thought that she could apologize for raising her hand to him. Erika left the room, agreeing with her father. Tasuku knew that after the engagement was announced, the girl was very depressed, and now her mood was exactly the same if not worse. Only the mother noticed that the reason seemed to her to be exactly the opposite. After all, this is exactly how children grow up, her father confirmed her words. The mother spoke to the father and implied that he spoke as if they were watching their child grow up for the first time. But when he looked at his beloved daughter, he was tormented by these feelings much more strongly. They have finally arrived. This was the largest martial arts temple in the Sumeragi domain, where our hero finally arrived. He was accompanied by Tasuku and Erika. Tasuku said that archery, fencing, magic, to learn martial arts, children and adult children train here every day. Since Erika went with them, and our hero did not understand why they took this girl with them. Tasuku explained that he took it because his future opponent insisted on it. Our hero really didn't understand anything, but he would leave it at that, he didn't care. Having dressed in a kimono, Tasuku noticed that it seemed that the young man managed to put it on without any problems, trying to understand who taught him this. But the young man did not accept these compliments, saying that it was a small matter to put on a combat suit on his own. He asked where his opponent was, because that was the only thing that really interested him. Tasuku refused to worry, because his opponent was here Itsuki. Tasuku apologized to Itsuki, even though he had just returned this morning. At that moment, Itsuki rushed to Erika, because he had not seen her for a long time. According to him, the girl became so beautiful, much more beautiful than before, asking if she really missed him, but he missed him, and could not sleep at night. Itsuki, hugging the girl, explained that he had prepared a bunch of souvenirs for her, and couldn't wait to give her them. The girls asked Itsuki to let her go, because she couldn't breathe. Our hero, watching the two of them, thought it was a joke. Was this really his opponent? Tasuku understood his doubts, but the young man's strength was absolute. Our hero remembered exactly what he had ordered to find an outstanding one, no matter what the miracle, no matter how cool the child was. Then, having asked our hero, Itsuki asked that this did not apply to him. Although at first the young man wanted to introduce himself, he was Itsuki Sumeragi, Erika's older brother. Hearing about his older brother, our hero was a little surprised. The young man introduced himself as Harold Stokes. The young man thought that all of this really didn't miss any important detail. At that moment, the brother realized that the young man in front of him was the groom of Erika, his wonderful little sister. The young man was filled with hostility towards our hero. The father, noticing this, asked the young man to stop. After all, this drove our hero crazy. Our hero stood opposite the young man who was Erika's sister, just like the guys stood near the training ground. All the students noticed that a fight would now begin below between Itsuki and Mrs. Gara Erika's fiancé. This was a chance to see Itsuki's legendary swordsmanship, of course everyone ran quickly. Look at this Itsuki, stand next to our hero, explained that he had heard all these rumors, it was time for a duel. At this moment, the guy was holding our hero by the shoulders, which irritated Harold very much. Therefore, he suggested not to touch him, addressing the young man not with the most flattering words. Although he meant of course that he was in pain and asked to let him go. Itsuki, watching our hero, thought that the guy still said that he was impatient to fight as quickly as possible. Therefore, it was time to take out the weapon before the young man faded away, according to Itsuki. So Itsuki thought that he needed to find bamboo swords. Our hero, watching the guy, saw Erika bring him a bamboo sword and realized that it was really Erika's older brother. Now he realized what kind of stuffed animal it was. At that moment, he carefully watched how his brother and sister communicated, because in the game other characters only mentioned him in passing. That's why Harold didn't recognize him. However, nowhere did it say that he was such a little guy. Giving our hero a bamboo sword, the young man asked if they really specialized in such things, so at that moment Harold tried to wield it, and thought that it was just some kind of pathetic stick. It turned out to be so easy for the young man, and this is because he probably trained with a steel sword all the time. Or was it because of the game characteristics of his character, our hero tried to understand, observing himself. At that moment in the stands, all the students sat down to watch the fight between our hero and Itsuki. Of course, Harold didn't like it, and looking at the students, they probably thought it was a performance, but his nerves were already on edge. Looking carefully at Itsuki, our hero assessed him. The young man did not appear in the original story after all, this is a world of sword and magic, and also a bunch of monsters in addition, and among all the candidates he was chosen by Tasuku as his experimental opponent. So, our hero probably thought that this young man was not weak. But remembering the fight with the original Herald, our hero began to feel some confidence. 
This mesmerizing speed and these amazing miracles of technology are all his strengths, which were now the sides of our hero. The young man had trained a lot and knew how to handle this body, so he decided that he still would not lose to this Itsuki. Tasuku decided to explain the rules, saying that bamboo swords are the only weapons that are allowed to be used. Vital organs, including the head and face, should not be attacked. The use of magic was prohibited. They had no time limit. The winner will be determined as soon as one of them can no longer fight. Otherwise, it will be no different from a real fight. Having then asked the guys, there were no problems at all with what he said. Our heroes had no objections, and at that moment Harold's mouth again came out with the wrong phrase that Harold wanted to say, but could not do anything about it. It seemed to our hero that they were playing with toys here, so he addressed this phrase directly to Tasuk. It seemed to Tasuk that there were some objections, but he wanted to avoid injury and serious injury at all costs. He wouldn't impose such restrictions if the two of them were wearing protection. Our hero decided for today to agree with these stupid rules. Itsuki thought to himself that he thought it was natural that his father would do this. Itsuki had already fought many adult fighters. He was strong enough to leave all his peers behind. This was unfortunate because he thought that he could have fun at least once during all this time, but his opponent was just a young son of aristocrats. Itsuki couldn't hurt him and cause problems for his father, and given this, he couldn't really fight. All this greatly upset the young man. Itsuki decided that he would give our hero some advantage, the right to strike first remained with him, so Harold had to show him the best attack. The fighters were asked to prepare for battle. The next moment, Tasuku commanded that they could begin. Harold ran straight to Itsuki, and seeing our hero's attack, Itsuki was very surprised that the young man was so fast. The next moment the guy knocked the bamboo sword out of his hands. Itsuki was incredibly surprised and couldn't even move. Eric and his father, watching from the side, tried to understand what had just happened. Erika even explained that she didn't see anything because it was so fast. Turning to Itsuki, our hero explained that if this was already a real fight, then the guy would have dinner with a dead troop, so he asked him not to be so afraid of joy until he took it seriously. Itsuki, looking at the young man, did not think that the guy was so serious. Itsuki looked at his bamboo sword and thought that it was out of surprise. He simply did not have time to defend himself, but the young man calculated his movements and at the last moment changed the trajectory of the blow. He could have hit him, but instead he deliberately knocked his sword away, as if to say, fight for real. Now Itsuki understood that this was exactly what Harold was looking for in their arena, just as he was looking for an opponent with whom he could fight at full strength. Therefore Itsuki wanted to apologize to the young man for looking down on him. Therefore he asked whether he now wanted to arrange a serious fight with him. Our hero thought that the young man was mentally retarded, because it was for the sake of such a fight that he had come such a long distance. Now it was clear to Itsuki, but only this time he asked that the first blow be left to him. Our hero was excited about the upcoming battle and invited Itsuki to bite him, if he was as fast as he boasted. Tasuku looked carefully at Itsuki and mentally Itsuki asked his father not to worry, because he would fulfill the promise he made, and even more. Itsuki will be serious with this guy. It was at this moment that Itsuki jumped out of his seat and ran towards our hero. Harold turned away from him, Itsuki realized that the young man was really fast. In terms of speed, he completely surpasses him, but the next moment Itsuki was able to cross his swords with him and talked about the fact that he had figured out Harold. Now everything was as Itsuki expected, it was possible to see how long Harold would actually last. Everyone in the stands was cheering for Itsuki because he was pressing, and they saw that the boy was definitely fast, and that seemed to be all he had. If Itsuki doesn't allow him to use this speed, his actions will become predictable. The force of the blows will decrease and repelling them will not be difficult. Moreover, having no real fighting skills, he rushes to every feint that Mr. K Itsuki throws at him. The guys were surprised whether the young man was really trying to parry every blow, but this meant that his level of swordsmanship was no different from that of an amateur. This way he won't be able to calculate his opponent's best attacks. Although Harold has compensated with speed for now, this will not last long. Thanks to his experience Itsuki gradually seizes the initiative. It was a matter of time before this boy ran out of stamina, the boys reasoned as they watched the fight closely. It is then that this fight will end with Itsuki's victory. At this moment, the guys crossed their swords again and Itsuki, making fun of our hero, thought that the young man had gone on the defensive. Although Itsuki was chatting, his very breath was like that of a driven nag, and one could say the same about our hero, Itsuki shouted at him again. The next moment, Itsuki began to attack Harold, and he fell for his bait. Then our hero thought that this was really his end. The next moment Itsuki couldn't believe what happened. 
After all, he noticed how Harold released the sword at the moment of his blow, and the next moment the young man struck the most powerful blow with his palm, after which Itsuki fell and our hero won. At this point, Tasuku stopped the fight. Itsuki couldn't believe that he lost to a boy who was three years younger than him, and it seems that the young man is the kind of opponent who improves over the course of one friendly match. Even though he lost, he wasn't the least bit upset. It was amazing, the guy said to Harold, and suggested he do it again sometime. Our hero explained that next time the young man would defeat him. Hearing this, Itsuki couldn't believe it, trying to understand what our hero was trying to say. Harold pointed out that Itsuki was apparently very stupid, because he had already been told that the weapon was a bamboo sword, he did not think that the one who would become the next head of the Sumeragi house would have such a chicken brain that he did not even learn the rules of the duel. Did the young man really think that he had knocked him down with a blow from his sword? At that moment, Itsuki began to laugh, because he just thought that the young man was very strong. Our hero didn't understand why he was saying this, but completely different words poured out of his mouth, propaganda of sarcasm, and that now he would tear out his tongue. Itsuki, listening to this, tried to ask our hero not to say such terrible things. At this moment, Itsuki looked at Harold Kun and thought of him as his rival and son-in-law, he thought that this would be a good future. At that moment, Harold did not understand why the young man was looking at him so carefully, and turned around and walked in the other direction. Itsuki, making fun of Harold, wondered where his little brother-in-law was going, or thought that it was probably better for him to call him brother-in-law. Our hero got angry when he heard this, because he explained to the young man that he shouldn't have worried about this. Harold was thinking that he needed to cool down and wanted to go for a walk. Itsuki, watching this, thought that he was probably making too much of a joke on him. At this moment, Tasuku and Erika were also carefully watching our hero. Harold, going out into the yard, thought about what a strange guy this young man was, because he was so suddenly friendly. This is despite all his hostility, as soon as he found out that he won, he immediately started calling him bro. It was easy to say that he would not defeat him, but Harold could not resist Itsuki's final attack. Losing to a child due to disqualification is even worse than losing normally. We needed to train more, our hero thought. At that moment, he saw a beautiful view opening in front of him. Not a single intrusive salesman. But how much it reminded him of his native Japan, the young man thought, but it was not Japan, he thought sadly. It's been five months since he studied here as a local antagonist, and he will die in eight years. He lived through the fate that awaited him, still tormented by terrible uncertainty. Will death find him before the hero tells his story? But even if he defeats the final boss and saves the world, will our hero find a way to return? or he will forget who he was and what he did, and ultimately will lead all life in this world in the role of Harold. The next moment, tears poured from our hero's eyes, covering his face, Harold thought that he could not give up. Standing away from prying eyes, our hero thought that the real Harold would not cry for anything, and it was just a shame for him. At that moment, Erica approached him, and when he saw the girl, he didn't expect that she saw it all. While our hero left, Itsuki smiled, and thought that maybe it was too early to call him little brother, but still there was nothing to be embarrassed about. At this point, Tasuku explained that everything was because he teased him too much. Next time I should have thought before I said anything to this young man, Itsuki, having listened to his father, agreed with him. Standing next to them at that moment was Erika, completely lost in her thoughts, she was thinking that she had to apologize for hitting him. At this moment Itsuki, as if reading her thoughts, asked Erika if she wanted to go after this young man, because he seemed to be a little upset. She could show a little sympathy, like his fiancé. Hearing this from her brother, she was surprised. When she left the battle center, the girl thought to herself that Harold really needed sympathy, because he had never made such an impression. Erika was sure that he went somewhere there. At that moment, she heard our hero talking about how he couldn't give up while wiping away his tears. Erika was touched by what she saw, and she remembered her father's words. She remembered her father's words that our hero was exceptional, but at the same time too exceptional. And this force often pushes away from itself. At this moment, watching Harold, the girl was amazed at the way he expressed his emotions. Erika tried to understand whether the young man had always fought alone like this. No matter what predicament Harold found himself in, he faced difficulties with an open face, Erika considered him the kind of person who would persevere through everything, and his arrogance was an indicator of his confidence. But she realized that she was mistaken, because it does not happen that people have only strength. However, Harold never had anyone, someone he could show his weakness to, even for the sake of those whom he undertook to protect. Harold feigned his pride and arrogance, and completely isolated himself. It's probably the same desire to become someone who understands Harold that her father talked about. That is why she called the young man by name, because she could no longer hesitate. 
Even if she can't yet, even if she still lacks a lot, someday she will definitely be the one to help him bear his burden. Turning to our hero, the girl praised him, saying that it was simply a mesmerizing fight. Even for her, who was completely unfamiliar with fencing, it was clear that Harold Salma was very strong. Our hero thought about why she came here, and he realized that she decided to make fun of her. Our hero didn't understand to himself whether the girl was really stupid, because he lost both the battle and the war. Then she asked for forgiveness because it seems she said too much, the girl said, giggling a little. Our hero watches Erica and tries to understand what she is up to. How could she chat so sweetly with a man she hated? It was all very suspicious, he wanted nothing to do with her. Therefore, our hero decided to behave the same way as always and asked her to leave. After all, he didn't have time to bother with her here. The girl asked if this meant that she could not talk to him. Our hero, looking at her with a cold gaze, agreed because it would be very convenient. Erica said that unfortunately, she could not afford it. Therefore, she asked to give her a little time. Our hero asked her to lay out what she had there, but only faster. The girl thanked him, saying that she was very sorry that she had acted that way that night. Bowing before the young man, she explained that she had not only lost her temper, but had also severely insulted him, and even raised her hand to him, which was a terrible act. Erica asked to be allowed to give him a sincere apology. Our hero did not understand whether she had really come here to say something like that because it was such nonsense. Our hero deliberately angered Erica, so her irritation was quite natural. However, he knew that it was her main advantage that she kept rethinking and apologizing. He knew this was why all the players had always loved Erica. But now she really decided to pour out all her unearthly kindness on him, so he asked him not to do this anymore. At that moment, our hero opened his eyes wide, because it seemed that someone was attacking them and asked them not to approach him. Therefore, he explained that her words meant nothing to him. She just looked stupid when she said something unintelligible and even in one breath. Our hero did not understand who gave in to her deceptive kindness. After all, he was already sick of her ostentatious friendliness. Harold asked him to go play with the maid and not dare to stand in his way anymore and so that his eyes would no longer see her. After all, how she was an eyesore, looming here, calling her a disgusting creature, our hero spoke with all contempt. Realizing that the girl was not leaving, our hero went himself. He understood that he had gone too far with this stick and poured out all the accumulated irritation on her, because she was right, there really was no one worse than him. Remembering the words of our hero, Erica thought that she lacked too much, the strength to fight the blows of fate, and the kindness to scold the weak. For his own good, the kindness to refuse, to watch carefully, and the kindness to do nothing, also exists, and she had to accept it. If she can't do this, no matter how many insults are thrown at her, she is confident that they are the best way for her to understand Harold and become someone who can support him. She won't ask you to wait. Erica decided that she would definitely catch up with him. Erica would never leave him alone, the girl thought to herself, looking carefully after our hero as he left. After all, all this determination came straight from her heart. Somewhere on the Bina Plateau, the guards shouted that it was impossible to climb under his horn, surround him and enter from the rear. The other one shouted that it was dangerous, but the young man did not understand how long they would fight with him. They were just wasting their time and let everyone step aside. At that moment, Harold came up and was asked not to do it. Our hero was standing in front of the monster. Hearing him roar, he thought that it was stronger than budding. At least that's what they said. The next moment, this beast rushed at our hero, but he easily dodged his attack. Harold was able to chop off his horn and thought that the blacksmiths would flock to this horn, but still had to pick it up. Seeing that the monster was casting spells, everyone was surprised, and the next moment he used the cry of the earth to attack our hero. But all this was to no avail, because the young man went to attack him from above. Jumping on top, our hero thought that his useless struggle was over, but he would kill him with just one blow. Using the blow petrol, our hero attacked his opponent. The soldiers who stood in front of it could not believe in any way that our hero had slain this thug without any help, and that it was a middle-class monster. Our hero was unhappy that the soldiers were standing and staring at him, so he suggested that they clear the road as soon as possible. The squad leader asked the first squad to bring the horn, and all the others had to drag the carcass away, and everyone had to move, according to him, because they were no longer good for anything. Mr. Harold will do the rest himself. At this moment, many knights were trying to figure out if Mr. Harold had always been so strong. The guys talked about how this was really the case, because they realized that the young man who asked this was a newcomer to them. The guys told him that almost three years ago, Mr. Harold started the Conquest Company. 
He had been quite powerful before, but now there were no comparisons. Upon hearing this, the young man was surprised. Whether he was weak or strong, he was the heir of the Stokes. The slightest injury, Lord and Lady, of course were against his idea. But they had to agree after Mr. Harold showed them his skills. Although he was really wounded at the very beginning. If Lord Hayden finds out about this, the captain and several other guys will literally be introduced to the axe. Hearing this, the young man thought about how much fun they had here, shaking all over with fear. The soldiers asked him to calm down, because this would never happen and informed him that he would soon understand everything himself. Three years ago, the Sumeragi estate. When they brought our hero, they tried to ask someone to help the knights. After seeing Mr. Harold with the knights, all the employees of Sumeraga tried to figure out what had happened. The knight explained that the guy was injured by monsters in the conquest campaign. The girls could not understand what came over him at his age, but the knights wanted to answer all the questions later. They needed to show the room faster and also call a doctor or someone who has healing magic. One of the knights apologized to him because it was his fault, as he believed. Mr. Harold protected him during the monster's attack. When I heard this Juno, I was surprised. Our hero was conscious and trying to figure out what an ungrateful knight he was, thinking that he probably shouldn't have saved him. But the knight tried to explain that he didn't mean it at all. Then our hero asked him not to dare to look at him as if he were some kind of child. After all, they all fought worse than the dead, and if you don't like this assessment, you should have waved your swords better next time. The young man sincerely asked for forgiveness. All the others, who heard what the young man was saying only, silently began to watch our hero. The young man asked to leave him in his place and not a word about it to anyone. Not a single living soul knows. If the news reached his parents, the whole campaign would be for him, since it would always end, and he needed to make sure that all the soldiers understood this well. The knight, of course, was still ashamed that one of them had to be protected by someone he had sworn to protect. And not only that Harold even saved them from the punishment that a cruel lord would have prepared for them. But what a shame if the knight had only been stronger. But the knight knew that he would definitely become so strong to protect his master. After the battle with the monster, our hero thought that he had already accumulated enough combat experience by slaughtering all the monsters in the area. Although there are many monsters that he did not even meet, but then he had to go deeper into such wilds, risking losing people, and it would be even more difficult for his soldiers to support him. Then our hero thought about Tasuku, and whether he had already achieved any success in their business. Perhaps he should have stayed at the Sumeragi estate. Returning to the Sumeragi estate, our hero saw Tasuka. He was very happy, because he heard that this time our hero did an excellent job with the campaign and the young man asked how the negotiations with Hayden went. The negotiations with Hayden went smoothly. Exemption of farms from contract fees, reduction of fees for the use of agricultural methods and reimbursement of certain taxes on crops. The Stokes family will now be able to use the new farming method at a lower cost. And our heroes will finally be able to start spreading it everywhere. Our hero was thinking that it would be much better to come to an agreement before joint management and a complete merger. But Tasuku explained that they decided to wait until the two of them were officially married. Our hero was even interested to see his reaction when he eventually finds out that the engagement will be cancelled. Tasuku only kept silent on this, he was more interested in how our hero fought with the thug this time, asking if he was injured. Our hero said that it was great and after each campaign, each of them asks him about the same thing. But even though the young man said so, Tasuku had seen this many times as a young man returning here with serious injuries, so he couldn't help but worry about him. Our hero did not understand if Tasuku was trying to say that he would let some stupid monster kill him, and he should have thought first before speaking. Tasuku was just surprised that Harold Kun was saying this, at his young age. Our hero suggested that his son should be better surprised. Then Tasuku laughed and thanked him, because he hoped that someday he would see their duel again. Tasuku had a message for our hero from Itsuku, and upon hearing this, our hero became interested. Then Tasuku told him about why the young man would not take part in a combat tournament in Delphite. It was rather an offer. The participants are divided by age, so the young men will not be able to fight Itsuki. But Tasuku believed that such an experience would be useful for him. Asking what our hero thought about this tournament. Realizing that this is a combat tournament, you will have to fight other people there, but at least not to the death. Our hero thought that it was very tempting and that, of course, he wanted to participate. Tasuku was glad that the young man agreed and decided that he would report it. Now he had to get back to work. Our hero suggested that he go to work for himself until he dies there. At that moment, he wished him a quick meeting, but these words remained with him. After hearing about the combat tournament, our hero thought that he might meet strong opponents like Itsuki there, 
whom he did not even suspect. It was very important now, after all, it was the right reprimand to deepen relations with the Sumeragi family. Stay away from the Erika minefield for three whole years. Our hero knew that they did not bypass each other's country, they talked only when necessary. He failed to improve his impression, which pleased him very much. But still, due to the progressive miasma in the Sumeraga domain, he couldn't afford to let his guard down until the hero's group dealt with them. Our hero knew that there were still mountains of problems waiting for him in the future. Five years before the start of the main story, he will root out all the risks of death while they have not yet been stabbed. The port city of Delphit. Going there, in this city, there were huge houses, a lot of people and they even had ships flying. Rainer Griffith was overjoyed to see this. His father explained to him that this bronze statue was a ship, and saying that he was the stupidest of his sons. At that moment, Colette noticed that the young man was being too noisy. I had to hurry up and sign up for my tournament before it was too late. The young man, running away, shouted that it would always be in time. They were finally out of the village, and he wanted to see everything. Seeing how pleased Rainer was, the girl realized that she could not cope with him. The father, coming up to Colette, explained that his son could not calm down even for a minute. Colette asked Mr. Orbel to calm down, because she would run and bring Rainer back. The man apologized for these problems. On his behalf he would apply for the tournament, so they would meet near this front, near which they were now standing. Colt understood and decided to find Rainer, trying to figure out where he had gone. At that moment, the girl bumped into the young man, and fell so that she injured her knee. At the same time, she met with Erica who was interested in whether the girl was hurt too much. When Colette saw the beautiful woman, she couldn't believe her eyes. Erica saw that the girl had broken her knee, then she had to go somewhere where it was not so crowded, because she needed to be treated faster. The girl didn't want to bother her, but Erica assured her that everything would be fine. She was not one to turn a blind eye to such things. The girl introduced herself as Colette and Merle. When Erica saw this girl, she was surprised that she was lucky enough to meet Colette herself. Looking at her leg, she tried to help her and the girl understood what it means that Lady Erica can use healing magic. But Erica explained that she was still studying, so she wasn't experienced enough. After hearing this, Colette couldn't believe it. But she also came here to participate in the tournament, as it seemed to her. Erica explained that she was only here as a support. Then she asked what was going on about Colette and the girl explained that her friend wanted to join the knightly order. That's why she was here for the same reason, she supported this bully. She knew that this young man had a wonderful dream and he was stronger than all the boys from the village of Blouch and even adults. Then Erica asked if they really lived in the village of Blush. Colette said that due to different circumstances, she and her mother moved there three years ago. Erica was thinking about our hero and realized that Colette turned out to be exactly what she imagined. The next moment, looking at her knee, the girl realized that everything had already healed and thanked Erica for helping her, and wanted to repay her somehow. But Erica asked not to worry about it, because she needed to find her friend. After all, if their meeting formed a strong thread, they will definitely see each other again. Then they could certainly become friends. Colette couldn't believe that the girl had asked her to become friends, and then Erica thought that maybe Colette didn't want this, since she was so surprised. But Colette was just shy, she didn't know if someone like her would be suitable. Erica explained that if they manage to meet again, it will be proof that their connection is real, and isn't it natural in this case to become friends. Colette, hearing her words, was surprised, agreeing with her, so the feelings that were now in her heart, the girl had to keep until the next meeting. After hearing these words from Erica, Colette the next moment turned to the mistress. Erica shouted that she would look forward to their next meeting. Erica just smiled back at her and ran to her companion. Colette was a little embarrassed by that smile. Our hero was waiting for Itsuki, and the young man appeared in front of him, apologizing for the fact that Harold had to wait for him for so long. Itsuki explained that he had finished registering, so now they could have a snack together. Delphit was a port city after all, so the seafood here was excellent, so he offered to enjoy them. After going to the dining room, Itsuki apologized to Erika and informed her that he was a little late. Our hero, when he saw Erika, did not expect such a setup, just as Erika did not expect to see Harold. Neither of them understood why both of them were here. Turning to her dear older brother, Erika believed that he had told her that they would have lunch together. Itsuki noticed that back then, when he meant to have lunch together, it meant to have lunch with Harold. 
Undoubtedly, it was his invitation. But if he was in the way, then he could leave. At that moment, both Erika and our hero jumped up from their seat and ordered the young man to stand in his place. Our hero was thinking about what hell it would be to stay here with Erika. Erika thought it would be so disrespectful to leave, but she didn't want to give Harold any trouble. In the end, everyone sat down and began to eat. Itsuki explained that the young man at the tournament could have earned an injury. Itsuki thought that he needed someone with healing magic. However, none of their family had time, so he had to ask Erika. Our hero explained that nothing would happen to him, trying to figure out if the young man had deliberately set it up. But the young man wanted to be safe, so he said that Erika was ready to accompany them. But they say they agreed that she would not contact Harold unless absolutely necessary, Erika reported. Itsuki also noticed that he felt that such a meeting was simply necessary, because if something suddenly went wrong, they would not have to waste time explaining. Our hero thought that this young man was right in some ways. After dinner, our hero left, and Itsuki said goodbye to Erika. Juno came up to Erika and asked if it was true that she had heard that Erika had lunch with Harold today. Then the girl said that this was indeed the case, but although they agreed that the young man would only know about her presence if he was injured. And then Juno asked if Erika had told him that she had seen Colette and Erika explained that he would keep it a secret. At the same time, she realized that they couldn't tell him everything yet. Erika confirmed her guess, in his eyes they didn't know who she was or any other details. Until Harold personally opens up, she won't let on that she knows about his secret, the girl thought. But she wasn't lying about what Colette said then. Since the girl is the one who knows the whole truth about Harold, she can become one of his allies. Erika was sure that the moment they met again, Harold would no longer be able to hide the truth from her. But Erika also thought about the fact that the girl could become not only his ally. After all, whoever in her place was attracted to Harold, and if Harold reciprocated her, Erika thought about what a rival in love would be. But she believed that this would also suit her. If the girl made him happy, then she wouldn't mind. On the day of the tournament, our hero finally saw the venue of the tournament. It was really great to see it firsthand. At that moment, he heard someone fighting behind him. Our hero was trying to understand why the taverns open right from dawn and, probably, it was in honor of the holiday. At that moment, the men were fighting so that one of them began to fall towards the girl who was carrying the barrel, realizing that she would not have time to dodge him, and the man understood this too. Both of them thought that the collision could not be avoided. But at that moment, our hero arrived in time and dealt with the man, sending him into the pot. When they saw the young man suddenly appear, everyone was surprised, and then tried to figure out what he was doing. Probably, this guy was too drunk to notice the girl, and it was necessary to swim in cold water, our hero suggested. After all, it is naive to think that they could have been sane from the beginning. Of course, the men were unhappy that our hero appeared, and suddenly was able to deal with one of them. Therefore, his friend offered to sort it out with him. Then the knights came and asked everyone to make way. Cody's unit from the Royal Order has arrived to protect the peace and something, the knight said. He couldn't figure out why these men couldn't get drunk and not get rowdy. Addressing the lieutenant, his colleague informed him that he was not allowed, as a representative of the law, to call respectable citizens like that. The young man they were talking to before completely ignored the knights and headed straight for our hero. At that moment, the lieutenant realized that he did not have time to protect our hero. The next moment, the young man dealt with his opponent. Looking at him, the lieutenant was surprised, because the young man had such a great reception. Smiling at our hero, the male guard explained that he was really stunned. He apologized for asking at such a moment, but could the young man answer what happened here, because he was very interested. Our hero said that some drunks got into a fight. One of them was thrown away. It seemed to him that he was about to crash into him and he was forced to intervene. At that moment, the man started talking to him very strangely. Our hero did not like it, so he turned around and decided to leave. Then the guard asked if the guy had accidentally been injured. If any scratch became inflamed, he could die. Our hero explained that everything was fine and that this guy couldn't deal with him. The knight kept up with our hero and suggested that he not overexert himself, otherwise he would stretch something for himself. Our hero was very unhappy that the young man did not lag behind him in any way, and informed him that if he wanted, he could go and ask onlookers or he was going to waste his time further, not understanding what the knight wanted from him, our hero asked. Then a friend, turning to the lieutenant, his partner, asked what they needed to do with this man, and the lieutenant thought that it was a good question. It was necessary to interrogate when he wakes up, they wanted to compare versions, but in the meantime he wanted to interrogate our hero. 
but he had already disappeared somewhere, and the knight realized that he had not even asked his name. Our hero was confused, he did not understand why Cody was here, because he was a former knight of the Holy Royal Order. Cody Luziel, the leader of the Friary Mercenary Gang, consisting of vagabonds, adventurers and other rabble. Sometimes he allied with the hero's group, but more often he just used and threw, running away with the loot. In fact, he is just a minor character, not so evil, unlike some. Our hero, standing nearby, did not even expect that this character would pop up so early if you think about it. Getting to know this character might make our hero's life easier in the future. Cody will accompany Rainer and others, so through him our hero could find out the state of affairs in the hero's team. But I thought that most likely he had already missed this opportunity. But he decided that it was necessary to look for sure, because this was not the last meeting. Itsuki, along with Erika and Juno, decided to ask our hero about what a wonderful day it was for the tournament. Addressing Harold, the guy explained that he had registered him under a pseudonym, and hoped that the young man did not mind. After all, most of the participants here are ordinary citizens, so Itsuki thought that his parents would mind if he showed his face in such a place. Our hero thought about the fact that most likely they would even be happy and shouted that it was necessary to beat up everyone who was in this arena. He didn't care what name he used to do it. Hearing that our hero really meant it, Itsuki smiled at him and was glad to hear it. And the next moment, screams rang out in the arena. There they presented the first match in the group of 13 and younger, telling the participants to bring glory to their hometown. And the announcer announced that Malik Makuya and the dark horse of the tournament, Lord Lord, were in front of them. At that moment, our hero was standing right in front of his masked opponent. Before that, the young man was trying to figure out what it all meant by addressing Itsuki. Itsuki was glad that the young man asked him this, since he entered the arena under a pseudonym, he thought that her face should be hidden away from prying eyes. Our hero, of course, was unhappy, throwing the mask and hitting it on the floor. Itsuki asked him to be careful with his things. Our hero, going out on the field, under the screams and screams, cursed everything in the world. After all, since when did Itsuki turn into such a joker, he couldn't believe it. That mask and the nicknames were just terrible. Also, after hearing everyone shouting his nickname, our hero thought to himself that they should have stopped supporting him. Going out into the arena, and looking at Itsuki, our hero thought that he would also remember it for sure. The young man, seeing our hero, tried to understand why he was so angry. And the young man, because of Itsuki, thought that he was already sick of all this in advance. It was necessary to finish the fight as soon as possible and leave. At that moment, he saw a man in the stands who was watching him closely, and the young man realized that it was Colette. The girl, looking at our hero, was also surprised. Standing in the arena, our hero saw Colette and turned away from her, because if he had known, he would have stayed in that mask. She could even become popular, hide her identity and cause fun, which is not the greatest artifact in the world. But if Colette is here, then he was just about to think about something. But the announcer shouted that the fight had begun. Our hero was able to deal with the young man in one blow. The next moment, the young man gave up, and the winner was immediately announced. Our hero, leaving the arena, thought that if Collet was here, then with a high degree of probability the young man was also here. The main character of Braveheart is Rainer Griffith. This was a young man who in five years would become our hero's sworn enemy, and he had nothing to meet with him right here and now. Therefore, he asked that this young man just sit here among the audience. But the next moment, the announcer announced that he was presenting the next duel to their attention. The blue sky, Rainer Griffith. When our hero saw him, he did not understand what made this young man come here. Our hero thought that Rainer was only in this city for the first time at the beginning of the game. In the next moment, Harold was thinking that he should have quietly merged with the tournament before they met. But then I thought what if he did it again in the morning, trying his best to avoid meeting with the game characters. Rainer's hatred of Harold in the original story arose from Clara's murder and was fueled by the latter's arrogance but he had already dealt with Clara's problem. From that moment on, he was going to lead a quiet, respectable life. Our hero thought about what it means that Rainer had nothing to hate him for. Until he had time to open his mouth, he avoided Cody because he is a game character, and it would be wiser to make friends with him. Our hero decided to get to know him, evaluate his current strength here, and perhaps even be able to ingratiate himself with him. And there, along with his knowledge of the original game, he will be able to give him advice, direct and control. He will go wherever he sends, and he pumps faster, and there he could save the world earlier than it was in the game itself. It was impossible to miss such a chance, our hero realized. At that moment, the announcer was announcing Rainer Griffith as the winner. After hearing that the guy had also won, our hero thought that it was time to implement a life plan. 
but did not understand how to turn to him, because there was no way to just say hello. Our hero knew that his character would not be able to say this, but would say something rude. After that, he could immediately run into a fight and he needed to find those words so as not to offend anyone. The next moment, addressing the young man, he called him Rudd, and turning around, Raynor said that he knew him. After all, he was the fastest hand in the tournament, asking how our hero was doing. Raynor watched and did not understand how the young man did it, asking if he could learn from our hero. Raynor pleaded that this trick was so wonderful that the guy had to reveal his secret, and if he couldn't, then he should at least tell him what technique he was training in. Raynor said that he ran with weights, but still couldn't move like Harold. Our hero is tired of such an obsessive attitude, and therefore asked to start by shutting his mouth. After hearing that our hero asked him to shut up, Raynor realized that he hadn't even introduced himself yet. Therefore, holding out his hand, he gave his name. Our hero shook it and introduced himself as Harold, saying that he could call him whatever he wanted. Raynor hoped that they would get along, he said, smiling broadly at the young man. It seemed to Harold that Raynor was capable of something. Nothing compared to all this worthless rabble that stood nearby. Of course, everyone who was standing nearby heard our hero and were unhappy with the way he talked about them. Harold, however, was not going to find out Rainer's abilities here, so if he wanted to learn his method, he had to try it out on himself. If Rainer is, of course, in the next round, our hero joked to Rainer. The challenge was accepted and Rainer hoped that Harold would not lose until he met him. So Harold suggested that he think about who he was talking to, that's the only thing he could understand, so that the difference between them is like between heaven and mud. Hearing this, Rainer thought that it was great, then they would meet in the arena, addressing Lord Snob. It seemed to our hero that they were stirring up everyone in the neighborhood, because they were talking, regardless of faces and opinions. Now people's aggression will be poured out on them in the upcoming fights. Although he was sure that Rainer would easily overcome such a thing, after all, he was a hero. He will eventually save the world, which is what makes this battle with him so entertaining. The moment they had all been waiting for had arrived. In the next call to the group on 13, Lord Lord vs. Rainer Griffiths. Hearing this from the announcer, the applause in the stands blew up the stadium. At this moment, Colette was very worried about her friend. Sitting in the arena, she was waiting for what the outcome of this fight would be. Rainer, as promised, got to the duel with Harold, and the young man saw it. Now he wanted to see how strong Rainer was, just like he was talking. The duel begins and therefore our heroes had to get ready. The next moment, the command was given and they could go into battle. Rainer went to our hero first and tried to hit him, but the young man only dodged his attacks and fought them off. Looking at Rainer, he tried to figure out if this was really all the young man was capable of. Was he really the hero who would save this world? Was it possible that everything was due to the fact that the young man was still a child? Even if it was so, but it's still a miserable world if it had such a hero. The tribunes were indignant at this moment, not understanding what the Lord was doing because he did not attack the young man at all and asked him to fight more seriously. At that moment, Rainer couldn't figure out why he couldn't hit the young man. Our hero thought that it was a disappointment, a worldwide tragedy. After hearing this, Rainer did not understand what the young man was talking about. But Harold thought that it was true, after all, his attacks were not capable of hitting him and everything was hopeless, no matter how much the young man attacked him. Ryder didn't understand why our hero didn't attack him then. At this moment, calling the young man an idiot, our hero went on the attack. After all, he could have done the same thing with him at any moment, there was a creak, and at that moment Rainer's sword flew out of his hands. And the next moment, when Rainer looked at his sword and he realized that the young man had cut it. He had exactly the same training sword as Harold, but how our hero did it, Rainer could not figure out. Harold explained that those who cannot react to such a thing arouse only contempt in him. Rainer fell to his knees and thought about how it hurt him because he always stood up to all the training. He practiced endlessly with his father and his friends, former adventurers, he had never lost to anyone except adults, and still he could not believe that the young man could win so easily. At this moment, when the announcer wanted to announce that our hero had won, Harold approached him and put a sword to his neck, to which he did not understand what the young man was doing. Harold didn't understand how a brat like him could stop a duel when the young man had not yet admitted defeat. Then the guy said that he thought that your sword was broken. Harold asked if there was no other sword around, and the next moment he went to get the sword to where the other knights were waiting. Addressing one, he ordered him to give him the sword. With a menacing look, looking at the guy, Harold said that he should have been aware if he refused what would happen, and the young man had to give him the sword. The next moment, Rainer saw our hero returning with a sword, throwing it right at Rainer's feet. 
Harold explained that if he still had the will to fight, then he had to get up and pick it up, take the sword, and become that hero. Hearing this, Raynor was surprised that our hero offered him such a thing. Harold didn't understand why someone like Ryder wanted power, why he needed it. Raynor recalled his childhood. The young man had always admired knights and wanted to become like them. But why? He wondered himself. After all, if he is strong, he can become a knight. If he becomes a knight, he can save many people. He recalled his childhood and how bullies behaved badly with other children. Taking things away from other children, they offered to call Raynor. In particular, they mistreated Colette, who was friends with him. They took away her medallion, which our hero gave her, and wanted to see how much the caravan of merchants that arrives in the city today would pay for this trinket. Attacking one of the guys, the girl asked him to stop, hitting the young man in the face. The next moment they wanted to deal with her, but the girl with tears in her eyes begged Raynor to come and save her. Here, at her request, Raynor appeared, who ordered the guys to let Colette go, because he did not understand how they were not ashamed to offend those who were younger than them. The guys laughed at the fact that it was Raynor in front of them, the hero of justice in sparkling trousers. They were just tired of watching the young man play knight. They thought that, being very young, everyone could say that he was a knight and then run to his mother and cry. Raynor shouted that everything would be different. The next moment, Raynor got it again. Sitting by the tree with Raynor, Colette apologized to him. The young man was always getting hurt because of her. At that moment, she was rubbing his cheek, on which the young man had been hit. But the guy said that she wouldn't need to apologize, because he probably looked so pathetic. He is constantly beaten up when he tried to save her, but still he was able to get her pendant back. Addressing Colette, the young man asked her not to doubt. After all, he would always protect her. Rainer might be the weakest right now, but he would train a lot and become even stronger. Then the day would come when he would become a knight and save her and everyone else who was in trouble. Upon hearing this, Colette was touched by Rainer's speech. At that moment, she untied the thread of her locket and handed it to him. After all, this pendant is designed specifically for him. He would strengthen his promise to become a knight and protect her, and she would be there to watch him chase his dream. Remembering Colette's words, Rainer got up from his knees and raised his sword, because there were people he had to protect. If he wanted to protect them all, he had to be stronger. Our hero thought that since he wanted to protect those, then Rainer probably fancied himself some kind of hero. The young man said that this was not the case, but he wanted to become one. Our hero mocked Rainer, it was not interesting. He was only interested in whether the young man even had the strength to jump above the perch, addressing him as a chicken. Rainer was really annoyed by this, if Harold needed strength, he would see it now. At that moment, he flushed and did not understand what kind of feeling it was, his body seemed so light. Our hero, watching this, was also surprised. The young man could not believe that the young man had entered the bravery mode. Rainer felt that this was different from anything he had felt so far. The power seemed to flow through his whole body and now he knew that he could handle Harold. And heading towards the young man, he began to attack him. The next moment, their swords started dancing in a dance, and the guys tried to fight each other. Watching from the stands, everyone could not imagine what kind of fight it was. These two guys were just incredible. Colette, who was watching them from the podium too, was surprised at how Rainer was artificially fighting. The next moment is a young man he struck such a blow that our hero had to dodge it with difficulty. Attacking Rainer, Harold offered to let him know his place. The next moment, Rainer realized that his strength was beginning to run out. His body felt like lead, but he didn't understand why it happened. The young man thought that he had returned to his normal state, which meant that he had used up his limit. Rainer thought that it was inevitable, because until today he could not even think that he was capable of such a thing. So he was happy with that. After all, the young man thought he was no match for Harold. At that moment, the medallion that was hanging around Rainer's neck fell next to him, and Colette's words flashed right in front of him, so the young man thought that he had no right to whine now. At that moment, he flared up so much that our hero was surprised. Rainer thought that this would be his last blow. He would put all the strength he had into it, and if Harold wanted to stop him, then he could try it. At that moment, Rainer, using the flame along with his sword, went on the attack. Harold used the nemesis blade to counter him. The next moment, there was an explosion in the arena such that everyone had to cover their faces from the light that illuminated the arena. Rainer started laughing, and the next moment he fell into our hero's arms, realizing that the young man was serious. Our hero reported that the young man was a fool, because it was necessary to start with this, since he can do it. It seemed to Rainer that the young man was merciless. The next moment, Rainer collapsed. Our hero couldn't even think that Rainer had just used bravery mode. 
After all, the bravery mode is an unstoppable state that significantly increases the parameters of attack and defense by four moves. Our hero did not think that the young man had fulfilled all the requirements for his activation. Meanwhile, I activated it twice, which means that it seems that the world has found a hero after all. It seems our hero was in a hurry when he called him a disappointment. Looking at Raynor, the young man thought. But in the end, his strength will come together in a deadly battle with his and the fate of this world will depend on it. Looking at the sweetly sleeping young man, our hero thought. Mr. Lord was declared the winner. Watching him, the stranger thought that she knew that this guy was an unusual boy, and it exceeded all his expectations. The guy can become a new trump card up his sleeve, the stranger thought, watching our hero from afar. Colette was running at that moment, pushing through the whole crowd, not understanding why so many people were here, and the next moment she appeared right in front of Mr. Harold. The young man only asked if the girl had given him the pendant. Harold had asked her to give the pendant to someone she would like to make her protector. Colette agreed. Our hero asked not to make him laugh, why among all people she chose this nobody, talking about Rainer, and the girl explained that Rainer was not weak at all, he always protected her, protected her. If she needed such weak protection, then our hero decided to agree with this, the right words to protect a coward, so she could continue to hang like a weight around his neck. Colette didn't understand why our hero always said such terrible things. In response to this phrase, our hero had no choice but to remain silent. After that, as he left, he explained that he had shown that the girl had already felt on her own skin how weak she was without help, but even if after that she chose the path of a weak brat, he wasn't going to help her anymore and he didn't care about her at all. After hearing all these words, Colette just settled down and thought that she had to go to Rainer. Rainer was in room 103, where Colette followed. The next moment, when she saw how the young man woke up, she was very worried about him. At that moment, Rainer realized that he had lost. Sitting by his bed, the girl asked if he was in pain and if he was alright, because she was very glad that he finally woke up. Rainer said that everything was fine, everything was fine, because Harold restrained himself. When Colette heard this, she couldn't believe it, and Rainer thought that something had happened. The next moment, turning to Rainer, the girl wanted to ask if she was worried about whether the young man would protect her in the future. Smiling, Rainer promised her, even though he lost today. Colette supported him, saying that the young man was not weak, even though he lost to Mr. Harold today. He would definitely win next time. When he heard Colette calling him Mr. Harold, the young man did not understand how Colette knew him. And she told me that once upon a time he saved her and her mother. The pendant of the Order of Knights that she gave him, she then received from him. Now Rainer realized that the young man was coming out to be an aristocrat. Colette didn't understand why Rainer was so interested in this. The young man explained that he knew this because the young man was an amazing person. He is strong and has magic, and he is also an aristocrat. But at that moment, when Colette looked at him with a surprised look, Rainer began to say that she did not even suspect what a strict young man he was. After all, he finally told him that he was an idiot, and that he had to start with this, since he could do it. Colette thought about how upset Rainer was. Of course, that was the case, as if it was incomprehensible anyway. But somehow he also had such an unusual feeling, as if his mother had scolded him, Rainer thought. When I heard this Colette, I was very surprised by what the young man told me. But he was not discouraged, and next time he was definitely ready to win and surpass him. Seeing how passionate Rainer was, Colette was glad that he was so enthusiastic. Getting up from her seat, Colette suggested calling the doctor now, also Mr. Orbel. The young man had to try not to worry. Running away from the room, Colette remembered Rainer's face and thought that he was strong after all. Cody saw our hero and asked if the young man wanted to join the order. At that moment, our hero was walking with Itsuki. Covering Harold with himself, Itsuki tried to figure out who the man in front of him was. Pulling Itsuki back, our hero explained that it was a young man from the Order of Knights. Seeing this battered man, Itsukini couldn't believe it. Cody laughed and said that even though he looked unpresentable, he was actually a knight with all the tricks. After hearing everything the knight said, our hero wonders what this knight needed from him. Cody, as he said earlier, wanted our hero to join the order. After all, he saw his duel, and it was just incredible. Our hero was very annoyed by all these clowns around. This was what he was thinking about, looking at this knight. The only thing that interested me was how the person found out that he would participate in the tournament. At that moment, Cody explained to him that after all, the young man himself had previously said that those drunks were just a warm-up. So he thought that the only event that required preparation was a tournament, and therefore offered to go to them. After all, he would get along well with them, addressing Mr. Lord, Cody suggested. Harold decided to say it only once, personally for Cody. 
He introduced himself as Harold, not Lord, and asked me not to spew that nickname out of my filthy mouth anymore. Now Itsuki realized that our hero really didn't like this alias and he was very sad about it. Harold didn't like it so much that he was ready to wring the young man's neck, so he asked him to shut up. Cody, at this moment, looking at our heroes, thought about what a sweet relationship they had. In that case, he would suggest that they go somewhere, get their throats wet, chat and all that. They went to the tavern together. Now it's clear why a fake name was needed to deceive the parents, as far as Cody guessed. Well, the young man did not accept why it was necessary to commit such a bad deed, for the sake of such a tournament. Harold noticed that he was just testing his strength, unfortunately, with such weaklings, it was only a waste of time. He was familiar with the fact that there were weaklings around, he was the only one, and that red-haired boy, they thought, was good. After all, he also invited him to them. Upon hearing this, our hero did not believe what the young man said. Cody asked him not to be offended, because he had disappeared somewhere, and the guy was right next to him, lying in his bed there, in this hospital, Cody chuckled. And he also noticed that our hero was interested in this young man. After all, in all the fights, Harold instantly defeated his opponents, but not Reiner conditionally taught him how to fight correctly and Reiner, in turn, tried to adjust, as far as Cody noticed. Although at first he thought that the young man was just mocking him, did not try to use his speed, took all the attacks, and planned or dodged. In this way, he cornered Reiner, forced him to release his power, but why no one knew about it, except for the young man himself. Turning to Mr. Cody, Itsuki decided to ask, because he had heard that they were accepted into the order at the age of 16, and Harold was only 13. Cody, of course, forgot about it, but no one cancelled the exception to the rule. After all, one of his friends Vincent joined the order at the age of 14. Itsuki was surprised that there were exceptions to the rules, but Cody explained that in general it was a rather rare phenomenon, an exceptional case confirming. Harold's talent. Cody was wondering what our hero would say to this, whether he wanted to fight against the forces of evil, defend justice, and so on. Our hero, looking at the guy, grinned, because he did not care about his justice, and he himself is a real evil. But Harold decided to agree and accept his offer, because he respected their ideals. But he also has his own goal. When our hero followed Itsuki in the carriage, he could not believe that Harold was serious. The Order of Knights often went on much more dangerous missions than the Conquest Companies. Itsuki didn't think Harold's parents would accept this decision so easily. Harold thought there would be no problem with that. Hayden is currently serving in the army. However, it seems that he also wanted to join the Order before. And the Order is much more decent than the army, since its honorary commander is the king himself and parents will not give up the opportunity to raise the honor of the family even more. It seemed to Itsuki that our hero joined the order for the sake of his family. The young man explained that it was just nonsense, because he lived only for himself. Returning home, our hero told his parents that he had been invited to the Order of Knights. It happened when he was walking around the city and accidentally came across some drunks. Harold got rid of them, and a passing knight invited him to join the order, so he would become the youngest knight in the order in history. After hearing this, the parents thought that it was just wonderful, and that he was the pride of their family. But it was time to prepare for the celebration. Summing up, our hero explained to his subordinates that he was going to the capital, and joining the courts of the Order of Knights. The young man leaves a week later and left ZH farming for Sumeragi. Periodically, the guys had to report to him about the situation and even if nothing special happened. Zen wanted to rush to our hero, but then Harold stopped him. At that moment, Norman was thinking that the capital was quite far away from here, he would have to keep in touch with letters, but this would take some time. Jake noticed. Our hero reported that it made no difference. If they needed to contact him immediately, they should have contacted Sumeragi, because he had already warned them about this. At that moment, Zen, who had escaped from his hands, was trying to stop Mr. Harold. After all, he had heard that the Knight's Order often went to dangerous and hard-to-reach places. Our hero did not understand why he was so worried about it. Zen explained that the young man was one in a million and they did not know what they would do if he was injured or even killed. To which Harold thought that he had come to his senses too late. Harold used to walk the adventure road and kill monsters, and as Zen could see, the young man is still alive, maybe only slightly injured once. Zen did not let up, because it was much more dangerous than what had happened before, and if Harold suddenly died, he did not know what he would do. Our hero, seeing how worried he was, ordered him not to bury him ahead of time. And then I thought that maybe Zen needed to do a favor, send him there first so that he wouldn't have to witness his death, the young man was interested. When Zen heard this, he thought that our hero had gone too far, and our hero explained that the conversation was over, so they could not return to work. 
leaving our hero alone. They left, and the young man thought that Zen was terribly pissing him off. After all, the guy was good, but often says the right things, but then decided to remove the last phrase, deciding that Zen was just a good guy. According to the script, Harold was supposed to join the knightly order at the age of 16, but before that he had been preparing for a long time to go to a dangerous land. It's just that our hero accelerated things a little. If you think about why Harold needed the order, he couldn't figure out the reason anyway. But the order is a symbol of strength and power. Perhaps the young man wanted to make sure of his strength. Harold did not admit his mistakes and failures. Having lost to Reiner twice, he desired more and fell for Justice's persuasions and led himself to self-destruction. In other words, he lived by fighting and did not want to use force for good. Moreover, he was a low man who wanted to get everything out of envy and vanity. Thinking about all this, our hero was suddenly interrupted. The preparations for the banquet were completed, and our hero had to follow the servants. When I came to the hall, I saw that everything was ready. The next moment, the parents said goodbye with him, and our hero left his parents' house. He arrived in the capital of Amagil, and when he saw her, he was surprised, because that was expected from the capital. He had never seen a celestial ship, much less flown one. Looking at the stairs, he understood that they were supposed to meet here. Then Cody greeted him. They met earlier than he thought. Our hero explained that he had not come on a date with him. He hoped that joining the order was not an empty chatter. The knight explained that the young man thought about it in vain and asked him to be calm, because he often liked to joke, but he kept his promise. Our hero did not understand to whom he was saying this, because one would think that he did not know him, Harold thought to himself. Cody, of course, did not think that he would meet someone who would go down in the history of the order, and he was just lucky. He was talking about that notorious young knight in history again. This is a 14-year-old boy that Harold was interested in. It was strange to Cody that he hadn't heard of him before. His name was everywhere now. Vincent Van Westerfort, current head of the Holy Order of Knights. At that moment, the young man was sitting at the papers. Then, turning to Sir Vincent, Shannon, who was his assistant, asked if something had happened. And the young man explained that there was supposed to be a group training today, but there were no plans for anything like that. At the time, he didn't understand why Cody's squad was on the street. Cody came in, greeting Vincent. Vincent did not understand what the noise was on the street and Cody was surprised that the young man still noticed. Cody and his squad were going to arrange the entrance exams for the newcomer. When he heard that he was going to do it now, he asked his friend not to cause them big problems. Cody, laughing, said that he could not promise anything because everything depended on this newcomer. This reaction surprised Vincent very much, and Cody, running away, informed him that he definitely had to look at the training ground, because Cody was sure that Vincent would like it. Watching Cody leave, Shannon, who was sitting together in Vincent's office, thought that Cody was noisy, as always. As long as Vincent remembered him, Cody had always been like that and he could not be changed, as long as there were no complaints from the townspeople. Shannon was thinking that Vincent was being too lenient with him after all. Vincent wondered to himself if he was really condescending, but it was true. He was the one who brought him here to this unbearable place that was alien to him. The one for whom this place was alien was himself. Our hero, while waiting for Cody, thought about Vincent Van Westerfort, the current captain of the Order of the Royal Knights. He knew that this Vincent joined the Order at the age of 14 and he shouldn't have compared himself to him, just because he became a captain at such a young age. Vincent is the main character of many stories of wandering people. He is serious, which is why he differs from Harold. About four years after the battle in the Belties Forest, the Order of Knights will lose all its influence. Cody will leave, and even worse, he will hold a grudge against all law enforcement officers. In the end, Vincent will lose to his best friend and fall by his hand. Our hero thought about the fact that in the present, Cody also went somewhere and left him completely alone. Then the other knights came up to him, trying to figure out what he was doing here. One of them was trying to figure out why his friend was talking so rudely to the young man because suddenly the guy was from the royal family. Our hero did not understand why they were bothering him. Everyone was talking about what a sweet boy he was. Then suddenly they were interrupted by Cody, who appeared nearby. He saw his colleagues. When they saw the commander, they immediately stood up. Our hero did not understand where Cody was missing. Cody explained that he needed to disconnect somewhere. Greeting his colleagues, he was glad that they were here. Turning to the commander, everyone was trying to figure out who this guy next to him was. And Cody told me that he brought him. Then the guys thought it was his illegitimate son. Our hero didn't exactly look like him. And Cody asked him to calm down. It wasn't a tabloid novel for them. Cody explained that it was Harold. They were going to fight him now, so he would take the exam, as they understood. 
The colleagues realized that it was an entrance exam. Was this the promising young man Cody was talking about? They thought that he was too small for them, but Cody wanted to assure the guys that the young man was not as simple as someone's footcloth. Our hero was thinking that Cody was probably laughing, because he was thinking that he had already been enrolled. After all, the young man did not understand what Cody needed, because he showed everything. Although Harold didn't mind beating up a couple of his soldiers, at least Harold could have told him about it in advance. At that moment, Cody, who did not feel guilty in front of our hero, offered to take him a knife. Cody wanted to say it only once and asked me to fight with all my might. Whoever beats Harold gets a letter of recommendation for a promotion. Upon hearing this, everyone was surprised, and Cody did not understand what kind of look the guys had. After so much training and a lot of combat experience, he thought that they must have been scared in front of a 13-year-old boy. Smiling, he asked the guys to show him who the knights were so that he would cry and crawl away to his mom. The knights were surprised that Cody had turned them against the young man so much. The next moment, our hero realized that it seemed to have an effect on them. The soldier's gaze changed dramatically. Now he understood what the inspiring speech of the commander meant, but it was even better for him. He would have had time to try out everything on them that he failed at the tournament. Cody asked the young man to show everything he could and not ruin his reputation. You, our hero, have already called him an idiot, because there is simply no limit to his gratitude. Smiling at Cody, he reported that for our hero there was anything. In front of Harold at this moment was a guard in an elite squad, subordinated to the king. Our hero has not felt such a tingling sensation for a long time, since that very meeting with Itsuki. Fighting monsters was not satisfying and fighting someone who was stronger than him, defeating him in a distant battle, something that could never be taken away from this body, Harold's thirst for battles. Our hero, putting his weapon forward, asked to attack who wanted to lose first. Addressing the commander, one of the guys asked if everything he told them was true. The commander said that, of course, he would get his advantage and reward, but first he had to win. The young man thanked for the opportunity and, turning to little Harold, regretted, but it is not often that he gets a chance to curry favor. Therefore, he would fight seriously, and for the young man it would serve as a wonderful lesson to find out how small his world is. Our hero thanked him for his opinion, addressing the blockhead in front of him. He would thank him by making him crawl away from him on his belly. Cody, watching him from above, asked only not to kill each other, and then informed them that they could start this duel. Addressing our hero as a brat, the guy offered him to defend himself, and the next moment he realized that the young man had dealt with him. Upon seeing this, Cody and all the knights were surprised. Our hero was surprised that he managed to knock out the young man with one blow. But it was his own fault, there was nothing to explode. Cody, who came to him, shouted that the young man was injured and maybe even killed, so he asked to call a doctor or whatever they had, laughing. Harold, watching this, thought it was not bad and suggested that the next in line at the morgue come to him. Another soldier came forward and our hero went into battle with him. It was already a little more difficult here, and the young man was able to practice fencing with him a little. The next moment, he was standing in front of the young man, opening up to him and offering to attack. The knight, seeing an opportunity, went on the attack and thought that our hero was probably mocking him. But the knight decided that he would never lose to someone like him. When he attacked Harold, he was thinking about it. In the next moment, Harold easily dodged his attacks, because when he was fighting monsters, it was the same. He did not know that people also make them special movements. All the movements of this knight were as if programmed. Usually people are more diverse in their techniques, adjust to the situation and only then attack. And this guy is like an opponent from a computer game. In Braveheart, it was just an rank knight. Many of them fell, trying to hit the protagonist with the same type of movements. Our hero had a terrible grin, which scared the knight, and then Harold thought that it looked like the young man was blown away, because it seemed that he was such a cool knight, but in fact, a louse that did not deserve his attention. Then our hero with a mocking face, which was his best provocation, offered the knight to entertain him and at least jump up with paws for laughter. The knight was very annoyed by our hero's words, so he went on the attack using a magic circle. Watching him, our hero, it was interesting, because no matter what magic the knights possess, they are preparing to apply it, they are always the same. If the blue magic circle was in front of him, it means that it is water magic. The knights used one water magic spell, so it would be a water strike. Our hero was able to easily resist him, and the knight couldn't believe it. The young man reflected the magic of another magic. When using magic of the same element in the same rank, it is possible to repel an enemy spell. 
but to predict in advance what kind of spell his enemy would use. It was an accident, the knight thought. The next moment, he decided to use a completely different spell, and then our hero anticipated him, using a fireball, repelling his attack. The king did not understand what it was and how our hero anticipated his magical attacks. Harold, addressing him as a stupid mutt, said that it was disgusting to look at him, and he could already come up with something and not blindly repeat after his trainer. Hearing Harold talking, the knight decided that he would kill him and headed forward. But the next moment Harold hit him. After seeing this, Cody couldn't believe his eyes, how Harold looked like Vincent. Our hero at that moment said that it was too boring to fight them one at a time, so let them all attack at once. Our hero shouted to the elite squad. Watching this battle, Vincent watched from the window with his assistant. This boy was incredible, as they noted. The only thing I thought about was that it was even too much, because the young man is just perfect. In this unequal battle, he skillfully repels all enemy attacks and goes on the attack in time. But really such a young boy can fight with experienced knights without making a single mistake. Vincent understood that the young man was not just anticipating the movements of his opponents. He seemed to know what they were going to do. Knights do have a special fighting style, but how did some boy learn it so thoroughly? Vincent wondered if he had ever fought with the Knights of the Order, but to learn everything in one fight. Or his battles are countless. Vincent had a bad feeling about this. Looking at Harold, Vincent wondered if the young man might belong to some hostile force. The commander was afraid that by infiltrating their ranks he could destroy the Order. He had a request to Shannon. He needed to collect all the information about the battles of their Order over the past 10 years, from large-scale battles to small skirmishes. Do not miss the slightest details and the most insignificant of them. Upon hearing Vincent's request, Shannon asked about his term. If you collect information about each knight, it can take a long time. It didn't matter to Vincent, she could handle the small skirmishes, and he would study the big battles. At this moment, Vincent watched our hero calmly fighting with everyone. Fighting with the entire elite squad together, Vincent hoped that these were unfounded worries, watching our hero closely. A couple of days later, Cody welcomed our hero to the Order of Holy Knights. He apologized to Harold for keeping him waiting. Cody needed to finish a couple of things and first our hero had to pay for the hostel. Our hero did this in advance, because he already knew it without him, showing him the receipt. Then he took him to the dining room and lunch was just in progress. They usually fed for free. But if you want something unusual, you'll have to fork out. There is a training room and a living room nearby a meeting room in a large building that was located nearby. There are also the rooms of the captain and vice captain, and these were barracks in front of him, veterans' rooms on the second floor, so our hero should look and not confuse it. But turning to Harold, Cody thought that since it was Harold, he shouldn't have any problems. As he entered the room, he apologized, asking the knights if everyone was there. Addressing everyone, he thought that everyone should have already heard that this was their new neighbor named Harold and asked them to treat him as their colleague from the 92nd Company. Our hero did not introduce himself as Harold Stokes, but asked us to try not to upset him. At that moment, everyone was looking at him in silence. The young man thought that it looked like he had already angered everyone. A girl came in, she finally found Lieutenant Cody, because he had forgotten the uniform for the recruit, and she did not understand how long it was possible to wait for him. Apologizing to the girl, Cody thanked her for bringing it to them, apologized for the fact that she had to work on her break. Then he saw two more, asking what they were doing here. If they had free time, they needed to go to their floor. Two young men were apologizing, but they wondered who was causing such a stir. The second young man, who was standing with the one who spoke, said that this one just dragged him along. Cody wasn't surprised that they were so interested, so he offered to come out for a minute so that the others wouldn't worry. When he walked out the door, he stood with our hero, and the guys couldn't believe that Cody was telling them that the young man had joined, but he was already cooler than them. They wished they had seen that battle for themselves. Our hero, seeing these two, thought that as he looked, someone was doubting something, and if they prostrate themselves and apologize, then maybe he would pretend that nothing had happened. When they heard our hero talking, they asked to show more respect to the veterans. Our hero explained that he would not show formal respect if he did not respect the interlocutor, because they had done nothing to make him respect them. Of course, Cody understood that the guys were bursting with interest, but they couldn't have been more polite at first to introduce themselves to their young friend. Apologizing to the young man, they introduced themselves in turn. The young man who came to keep his friend company introduced himself as Robinson. Next to him, Shido was the most talkative, and the girl who brought him the formula was Eileen. Our hero was just looking at them in silence. Cody thought that something had happened to him. 
the guys did not understand what Harold had for his behavior towards the elders. After hearing about the elders, our hero explained that he really needed to run after them, that they had just been born a couple of years earlier. Eileen, hearing Harold talking, wanted to hit him, but Cody, grabbing her in time, informed them that it was already time. The guys also said goodbye to our hero and offered to have lunch together sometime leaving the young man alone with his thoughts. Harold was thinking at that moment about what it all meant. Robinson, Shido, and Eileen, weren't they supposed to just die? After all, Cody will abandon the Order of Knights and create the Friary Gang, and the reason for this is the battle in the Belties Forest, where his entire squad will die. Being the only survivor, Cody will leave and his last resting place will be the Friary. In one of the game events, Cody will pronounce the names of his fallen comrades and these names are Robinson, Shido, and Eileen. Their only role in the whole story. There was no description of characters or appearance, just a few letters on the screen, so I was trying to figure out if he should have saved them. The battle will take place four years before the start of the game events, that is, in a year. From what Cody said, they wouldn't enroll a rookie in the squad in such a short time. It turns out that he would not be able to intervene in the battle and had to find some other way. Our hero understood that it would be difficult, because he knows almost nothing about them. He only knew a line about them from the original, that they would die a year later in the Belties forest. Remembering Clara, he knew that everything was different with her. Harold was fully aware of all the circumstances, but more importantly, Cody will have no reason to leave the order and no friary will appear. There are a lot of stories in Braveheart that can't be completed without them. And, in other words, friary is of huge importance to the main storyline campaign, and that would be the worst outcome. Our hero was trying to figure out what he needed to do. He should pretend that he does not know about them or their sad fate, or move away from the original and save them, our hero wondered. While the young man was tormented by doubts, records of all the fights that they asked for were brought to Sir Vincent. Upon seeing this, Vincent was surprised that Shannon did it so quickly and thanked her. He also brought him the Harold Stokes case. Looking at the dossier, Vincent realized that the young man had signed up for the cleanup mission as a volunteer. Cody also read it, not understanding why Vincent wanted to show it to him. Vincent explained that he wanted Harold to join his squad, so he called him in to discuss the details. But Cody protested, because the young man was still a green recruit. First it was necessary to teach, then the oath, only then to join the squad. But Vincent decided that he could skip school, accelerated two-week course for a young knight. If he successfully completes the final tests, he will get into Cody's squad. Of course, so there was a right just to stare at him today and not only stare. That's why Kim would be responsible for the preparation and had to look after everything and no more than the young man already took advantage of the fact that he joined Verdun at such a young age he would be stared at, as he put it anyway. Pizza noticed that the guarantor has incredible power, so they will make an exception to the rule after looking at the serious Vincent. Now Cody understands everything. Since Unin believed that the reason was so good, at that moment it seemed to Vincent that he could not convince his friend. Of course, Cody explained that he still didn't understand why it was necessary, because there was a whole dossier in front of him. Even Erica Twilight was here. Then Vitsin asked Cody what he thought of Harold's style of blah. Yakusha explained that he was thinking that this simply could not be. He could not imagine that the young man was fighting so well. Vincent explained that he also thought so. They need to find out who taught him and sent him. But Cody explained that Harold was an aristocrat of those same blue bloods, if he didn't confuse anything but also apologies that he dealt with the family of his servants with special cruelty, and they certainly could not close their eyes to this, explained Hungry. He thought that he had chivalrous prowess and he did not want to judge by rumors. Vincent ordered Coda to take him under his wing so that he would always be in his sight. They had to kill their nobility and humanity to no one. Except for Cody, he couldn't trust this job. The cat realized that Vincent wanted him to become his supervisor, he still did not understand why there were such strictures. He explained that they could not trust someone with you only from his aristocratic background. They already had a bitter experience and betrayal of hate ten years ago spoke well about it. Of course, Cody remembers this as a bodyguard in his majesty spying for other kingdoms. Anhik committed suicide as so much became known about his betrayal. They never found out what kind of secrets he was selling them to anyone. So they should be doubly suspicious of all promising recruits. Vincent asked Cody not to think that he doubted him or that he was just worried. The cat patted him on the shoulder and informed him that he understood everything and would do everything. Vincent apologized to him and then Cody didn't understand why his friend was changing because he had to thank him. It upset Cody that he was suddenly so serious. The same explained that everything happened because someone was too careless here, whether he wanted to or not. 
but he had to become serious if only his faithful friend and comrade understood how difficult it was to cope completely alone. At that moment, when Cody left, after hearing all this speech, he covered his ears, saying that they were sick and he urgently needed to go to the infirmary. Leaving Vincent alone with his thoughts here, he just thanked his friend for always helping him. Our hero has finally finished. Our hero got up at five, two hours of training, breakfast, a cleaning outfit, a laundry outfit. After lunch there was also a workout. A week has passed since the young man joined the order. It wasn't that this routine was that difficult for him, but it just took him a very long time. Harold doesn't even have a minute to spare for personal training. Then suddenly our recruit was noticed by the others. The young man was trying to figure out what they meant when they said that he was that recruit. After hearing the guy talking, the knights did not understand if the young man had not been taught how to talk to the old timers. Now they would like to show what happens to arrogant rookies like him. Our hero could not have thought that only freaks from the alley were recruited into the order, without looking up where the idiot Vincent was looking. After hearing what he said about the commander, they couldn't believe it. At that moment, our hero jumped right over them and went on. Seeing this blatant disrespect, the guys wanted to stop him, but our hero had already run away. Running away from, I thought that he would stop right away. The main thing was that they had to wait, not understanding what kind of irregular relationship Vincent had divorced in the army. After all, it would have been necessary to join the squad sooner and maybe it would have been easier there. But there was no peace for our hero in the dining room either, because everyone was staring at him and discussing him. As he thought, if he stayed away from people, there would be less talk. At that moment, several people came up to him, who also looked at him and then saw Harold. They were smiling, because they thought that the young man had already made friends, as they could see. When our hero saw these three again, he only thought to himself that they had scared him. But I didn't understand what they needed. The guys explained that they just didn't want anything. They singled out our hero, and that he was sitting alone again, so they decided to brighten up his loneliness. After all, taking care of the newcomers was the responsibility of the elders. Our hero suggested that they take better care of themselves, because apart from these two, Shido did not talk to anyone. Were these really all his friends? The young man asked, turning to Shido. Shido asked him not to talk nonsense, and wished him a pleasant appetite. At that moment, Shido explained that he was not Robin, who couldn't connect two words. He has friends all over the order. After hearing this, Robinson couldn't believe what his friend was saying. Sitting with tears in his eyes, he asked not to say such things. Others were afraid to talk to him because he was so scary. Looking at all of them, our hero was surprised. At that moment, Eileen was handing a handkerchief to Robinson, asking him not to shed tears, because the soup would overdo it with her tears. Watching Shido, Harold saw that he wasn't even trying to support his friend. Our hero did not understand why the young man was so upset. These weaklings are afraid that he will accidentally crush them if he moves. Our hero was thinking about what could be said, something encouraging. That's the only thing he could say. After hearing what Harold said to him, Robinsoff took his hands, telling him that no one had ever said such words to him and thanked him. Eileen, watching this, did not understand why the young man was thanking him. So, our hero has his first fan, and now he probably confesses his love to him. But Harold couldn't respond to his feelings, because he was already engaged. Turning to Harold, the guys asked, because he was already used to sleeping in the barracks and investing instead of servants, but he still couldn't make friends with the elders, and everyone was older than him here. Our hero explained that there was nothing surprising in this when there were only idiots around. Shido noticed that friends were also needed to have someone to rely on in training and in battle. He understood that the servants were better, but he did not have any services here, and in general he could turn to them, they would always be there. Hearing that the young man was so kind to him, our hero explained that if he were in his place, he would not swear about always talking about him as a suicide bomber, and in general they were too noisy. Listening to how our hero was squeamish, the guys laughed, thinking about what they would work together. Eileen asked him not to be so cocky. Harold is not the most pleasant person on earth here, the girl explained to Harold. Otherwise, not only would he not make friends, but he would not meet anyone either. Shido, laughing, said that it was definitely not for her to talk about it. The next moment, he got a fork in his eye, straight from Aileen. Our hero explained that no one would understand him like that. He was not interested in anything romantic. Approaching him, Kaido patted our hero on the shoulder, informing him that what kind of romance was there when our hero was already engaged. But there are also advantages, there is no need for a girl anymore. Upon hearing this, our hero was so surprised, and so were the three of them who were looking at our hero. After hearing what their lieutenant said, they couldn't believe what they had heard. When our hero saw Kaido, he did not understand what kind of creature was disheveled. 
Shido couldn't believe that the young man wasn't even denying it, so he asked the lieutenant to tell them the details. Kaido said that she was the sweetest girl in the world. She is perfect. The words elegance and beauty describe her as well as possible. Our hero ordered him to shut up, not understanding how he found out about Eric. Realizing that the guy is not coming up, Shido grabbed his hands, did not understand if the young man had said about Eric. He couldn't believe that our hero had such a f***ing serious relationship at such a young age. It was too early for Harold to hear about Sugar, let alone the engagement. Our hero, hearing how Shido was pestering him, ordered him to think what he was talking about, calling him not the smartest. No one could believe that the young man was younger than them, but he has a relationship. They don't, Aileen cried. Kaido, dropping his words, informed that it was time for him to work and asked the guys to loiter too, leaving them. At this point, Shido asked Kaido to stop, just like our hero, addressing him like a brute, not understanding what he was up to.